All right, and we're live here at the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neil, and I'm joined by Richard Bergen, writer and director of Fang. It's very cool to have you here. It's wonderful to be on your show, Neil. Thank you so much for inviting me on as a guest. I remember last Thursday I got the uh, message, you know, and I, I saw your friend request, and I was like, you know, oh, you know, I want to look at this guy's profile. He looks kind of familiar. And so I clicked on it and I was like, yes, yes, you know, this is <laughs> this good. is really yeah. cool. I definitely want to be a guest on without your head, and I feel really good to be here. Well, I appreciate you doing that. Yeah. And I heard about Fang through Lynn Lowry, and I was very happy to see it. And I know it's played a lot of cool festivals along oh, with my you. film. That was very cool. And I am a big fan. I'm not just saying that because you're here. I really like Fang. Uh, and that's for people cool. not familiar yet, could you give them an idea of what Fang is about? Well, in uh, in one sentence, Fang is about a man who is turning into a rat, and that is the um, most uh, simple and straightforward way. Can just, I like to think that there's a lot more to it than that, or at least yeah. I hope so, because I've been working on this for a while by now. But in, in essence, it's it's about a guy who's turning into a rat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's good not to know too much about it because you <laughs> to go in and uh, and go, go along with the ride. Now you said you've been working on it for a while, and you know I've been reading about you and your father and stuff, and I assume that the story originated, kind of inspired by your father. Yeah, my uh, my dad got Parkinson's in 2012, which you know at that time you know I is we faced as in high school in 2012 and that was when my dad became terminally ill with Parkinson's and at that time you know I was like 15 years old I didn't really know much of what was going on and he didn't really tell me much of what was going on and it was this very gradual deterioration that took a number of years so I, you know, I was, I, we, we, we were both in denial about it for a long time. And my dad, you know, he never really went out and had said that he, he never actually told me that he had Parkinson's until around 2017. So it was about five years where we were both uh, in denial about what was happening. And, and so I think that was when the, the seeds of, uh, fangs started uh, getting planted in my head because along with the guy turning into a rat, Fang is also a movie about a family, the Cochrans, and it's Billy and Jada Cochran, mother and son. And at the beginning of Fang, Jada, who is played by Lynn Lowry, she she go, she gets hospitalized for Parkinson's. Parkinson, she falls on the uh, floor and you know, she's frozen there. She can't uh, get up. And and before Billy starts having any rat-like symptoms of, of his transformation, he has to cope with the psychological trauma of living with his mother, Jada, while she is, you know, deteriorating mentally and physically from Parkinson's. And... I just realized probably with this description, I probably a lot of people are probably like, no, this movie sounds so depressing, but there's a lot of dark uh, comedy in it too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what was the, um, <clears throat> when you're, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're writing something so personal to you, what's that experience like? Is that hard to do? Is it, is it part of it like therapeutical? Well, in a way I think it's actually would be harder for me to do. Now, I think when I was, when I wrote it back in 2019, I think, you know, I was still pretty close to everything that yeah. happened. And so when you're looking at it from a cynical writing perspective, it's like, all right, you know, I don't have to imagine so much what this character would be like, because I could draw on this, you know, scene that, <clears throat> that happened, that I witnessed personally and i don't want to make it my autobiography because yeah 
You know, I've never, I've never transformed into a rat, and I've never committed any. Not yet. Anyway. Yeah, not, yeah. Not, not that have been proven. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um. And and Lynn's performance. Uh. Not only is it great, it's heartbreaking. Um. What was that like to watch <laughs> her? You know, play that role, and um, like, is it similar to to your father's experience? How she plays the role. Oh, sorry, I'm recovering. Yeah, I know. <coughs> sorry. Uh, a Richard's bit. under the weather, so I'm glad yeah. he's here. But and, oh, and yeah. we're not in the same yeah, room. My voice so usually things. sounds a little bit less. Uh oh, you broke up on me here. When I'm when I have a cold, like a oh okay, kind of that kind of voice. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was really wonderful to uh, work with Lynn on thing i was incredibly happy with her performance and the way that everything turned out and actually <coughs> working with her it was it was kind of a it was a kind of a funny thing because we didn't really do any rehearsals with lynn basically until <coughs> like shortly before she started uh filming you know she and i was and i was kind of wondering you know in the days before filming, you know, what is her take on Gina going to be like? What does she have in store for us for this character? And then we got, yeah, we that she got to Chicago to be on set filming. And, you know, and Lynn is this very kind of soft spoken, you know, sweet woman. You know, she does not seem very intimidating in real life. And then when, you know, you know, the, the film crew was uh, setting up the shot and I started, you know, doing the rehearsal Lynn before the before the filming. And, you know, she just dived right into it right away. It was I was like, whoa, you know, she is like very on with this character. And the first scene that uh, we filmed with Lynn, it was I'm not going to give any uh spoilers but anybody who has uh seen fang will know what i'm talking about it's the scene where jada comes into billy's bedroom that is the first scene that we filmed with her in the movie and that was the first time that dylan our our incredibly talented actor who played billy that was the first time that uh dylan and lynn had been together I'd said in this very uh, dramatic scene, I don't want to, any other yeah, word, but dramatic, I, that would be kind of like a spoiler word. So, yeah, and, and I could tell that, you know, this, and I think that, you know, made it actually kind of great in a way that they were, you know, together for the first time, you know, filming this because, you know, the tension was real. family emotional drama without you know feeling very comfortable because you haven't gotten to know each other yet so I think without it there are a lot of things that happened without my intending to that I think ended up making Fang better and I think that was one of those things yeah and uh you mentioned Dylan who plays Billy who does a great job too you know a lot of people talk about Lynn rightfully so but Dylan is uh, wonderful in the movie um, but you know, he's with a veteran actor and he's holding his own and he's great in the role. Uh, how did you know, did you know Dylan before the movie? I did not. I put out an audition notice for Fang on backstage.com. And actually my original idea for Fang is that, you know, I want to play Billy myself and I'm really thankful that my producer, Robert Felker talked me out of that idea because it's you know that was more of like my ego doing the thinking for me you know I'm not a professional actor really and I would not have done anywhere near as good of a job as uh Dylan did in playing the role it was more like I want to be a star darling that was kind of my thinking and yeah. uh oh hi Annabelle hi hey, so Annabelle sorry here. I'm late I'm so happy yeah no here. problem I was you know like with my with my cold, you know, everything got 
delayed and it, it's you know you never you never want to get sick while you're distributing a movie it's uh oh. it's bad timing but i'm mostly over it now i'm mostly over mine too My that's wonderful everywhere so i'm glad we're on the men together that's right <laughs> oh, yes sorry. we were just talking about uh, uh dylan as yeah. billy oh, yeah. in uh, in the movie I love this movie. Oh, thank you so much. Right off the bat. Thank you so much. I was, I'm like, the, this group needs a bigger budget because you do so much. I was so, I was just super, super, super impressed. Truly oh, loved thank it. You. Lynn, all the actors were amazing. Lynn was, I was just blown away by Lynn's like all over the place range. Incredible. But no, I, I absolutely loved it. Oh, thank mm. you so much, Annabelle. You know, it makes me feel so good, you know, to hear that. And, you know, it's really good, you know, to acknowledge everybody who worked on Fang, you know, and, and that's certainly, I could never have done this whole movie all by myself. And that was something I was talking about right before you got out here is that I was originally going to do more of it by myself. And I'm like, I'm very thankful that I didn't do that. Yeah. Because I think that, you know, we really had an incredible team for Fang. You know, I'm really happy with the work that everybody did on the movie. I think it was kind of like lightning in the bottle in terms of the group of people we got together, you know, and, you know, and everything just kind of like synthesized in, in a way that, you know, and that was a really magical feeling for me on set is, you know, watching. The, the scenes come to life through the monitors, you know, and of course, you know, I, I envisioned this stuff, you know, in my head while I was writing the script for Fang, but then when you actually see it in front of you, like this is happening right in front of me, that it's kind of like, whoa, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of, um, you know, it's, it's a really, it's a really thrilling feeling and that thrilling feeling gets you through the uh, schedule of being on a film set. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Todd in our, uh, on Facebook, Todd Yeager. Does oh, nice reviews. to meet you, Todd. Uh, Lynn has been turning up in some surprisingly serious roles. This and what have you done, Daniel? She is amazing all these years later. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I just I, talked I, to her a little bit before, after I finished. Now, now. Yeah. Yeah. I, after, right after I finished Fang, I told her she was amazing in the movie and um she said it was a really hard role to uh to uh play and she was really uh grateful to have brought the character to life it was oh, thank like you an so incredibly much. hard role to play it was really uh across the map of what a human being can be it like from sweet and loving and wonderful to like you feel bad for her and then sometimes you don't like I feel bad for her no matter what, but she can be really not great. <laughs> yeah, be really challenging. I guess that's kind of a milder way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, just I was just super happy for her to have the honestly to have the opportunity to have this role because I thought this is like a. I don't mean to make it sound. But it, I think that would be like a like a kind of like a dream opportunity for a person to have because you can show that range and she does it and she does it well. Yeah, no, I was I was really happy with Lynn's performance and I'm really happy that she reached out to me before the making of Fang. And I actually changed the script while I was writing it to expand her character's role mm -hmm. a lot, you know, and, and in my first draft early 2019 i was writing that billy's dad has parkinson's because my dad had parkinson's so i was basing it off of that and then when lynn expressed an interest mm -hmm. in acting in the movie i was like okay dad is dead is this going to be mother and son and mm -hmm. i'm going to give her the second biggest role in the movie after billy mm -hmm. So what was this like for you? You're saying that your father had Parkinson's and here is this character who's just, there's just so much. And to have, I, I've had family members who had, you know, they- I'm sorry. Own, 
Yeah, totally. So I, I get that, how it can be to have someone who's changing and the powerlessness yeah. is with that experience. And it really, the movie captures that and there's like anger involved. There's so many emotions for like the family members. So how was it for you to make this? Well, the the interesting thing about, you know, uh, living through something like this or something similar to this in real life is that my reaction to Fang and how I felt making Fang is not what someone might think. I think the real trauma for me was living through it in real life. And now the more times that I watch Fang, the more humor I see in the movie and that's kind of my perspective on it from being with this, you know, movie for so long, but I kind of think of it as a dark comedy at this point. And I think that and I always like when somebody who watches it picks up on that because that's not usually the reaction I get for Fang. But, you know, if you're at one of like the film festival screenings of it and you hear somebody in the audience, you know, laughing you know it's probably me <laughs> <laughs> um how, how about the uh the drawings in the movie and there's a lot of like lore behind the characters so are, are like the cartoons the is that something you've worked on before the movie well i did draw some uh some cartoons when i was a teenager it was kind of funny when i was uh you know, in middle school and high school, I was thinking, you know, oh, you know, I'm being a bad kid. I'm doodling on my uh, notes when I'm supposed to be taking notes. And as an adult, I realized, no, you know, I was, you know, developing my art skills and what they wanted me to be taking notes for. That's what was pointless. Mm. So, and I've I've gotten back into painting in the past few months which i hadn't done for a long time before that but i did not draw the cartoons for fang myself they were done by my friend aubrey thorne who and she did them back in uh i think late 2019 or early 2020. yeah and they're very cool how about just like the, oh, the, the characters themselves like are they based on any like uh characters that you've created beforehand or were they just made yeah, up based for the on characters that I've created and I can't uh, give away too many spoilers sure. about what it's uh, based on because that is also something the story my friend came up with. Oh, very good. Well, hopefully we see more of that oh, in the thank future. You. Uh, Todd's also hoping that uh, maybe we're getting a hand of ourselves, but he's hoping that Fang will be get uh, released on Blu-ray at some point. Yes, it will, Todd. I definitely want Fang to uh, be available on uh, physical media, DVD, and Blu-ray at the very least. And I want to be selling Fang merchandise and other things related to Fang, too. And one thing that I'm planning on launching <clears throat> tonight, pending final approval, is my Fang Indiegogo campaign, which to raise the DVDs and Blu-rays and other Fang-related paraphernalia. And one of the aspects of the Fang Indiegogo campaign is that for the next two weeks, however long we're running it, you will be able to buy credits on Fang. It's a brief window of time where your name can be added to the Fang credits and shown on screen in the movie and listed on IMDb. And, you know, then we'll, we will update the credits to the, to show everybody who, who bought credits as perks from the campaign and who contributed and everything. And those names will be going on the DVDs too. So you can become part of Fang, part of the adventure. Yeah. I think it is a nice thing to be able to do because, oh, you know, with you. all the 
yeah, the, with the crowdfunding, um, I know there's some mixed opinions about who gets the credit, but people are actually giving money to make these films oh, yeah. happen. So I think it's very fair to be able to, to say, hey, this person helped. I think Absolutely. Really no, I mean, well, it's just like a big budget Hollywood movie only on, you know, like a smaller scale, really, in terms of, you know, getting, you know, the those kinds of credits. Like, I'm the executive producer of Fang because of my money that went mm -hmm. into it. And maybe a little too much of my money went into it, which is why I want to do the crowdfunding campaign now. And I think it's also a great way to get people <clears throat> to feel involved. And a lot of, I know a lot of the people I know have been hearing about this movie for years, you know, and are very curious. So I think that, you know, Fang is not the Richard Bergen story. It is not the Richard Bergen ego trip. It is something that, you know, that belongs to all of us, really. It's, you know, and I want it to be for everyone. And I want to give any anybody who's out there who's interested in the movie and anybody who's interested, you know, in helping a chance to be part of it. So uh, how, how many festivals did you get to attend to, to watch it with the uh, crowd? I went to three, the <clears throat> Midwest uh, Monster Film Fest in Davenport, the uh, Sawdust City Fright Fest in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and the Milwaukee Tr Twisted Dreams Film Festival, which is where I saw your movie, was screened there, and I definitely recognize you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Originally, he said he didn't recognize me out of the Backwoods Bob uh, attire, which is probably... Well, when you look closer than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, what's that experience like, though? Not watching me as Backwoods Bob, but watching your a movie with an audience. Oh, you know, it feels so good. I mean, and when you're a kid, you know, going to these different movie theaters with your parents, you know, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of living that experience of like, you know, this is how movies are meant to be shown on a big screen to an auditorium. This is, you know, the real deal. This is not, you know, I'm stumbling onto Netflix or YouTube at three in the morning and, you know, just drunkenly <laughs> clicking on something. You know, this is like, it's it's really good to get to see it on the big screen. It's very intentional. I think that's something i'm picking up from what you're saying is if you you very much have to choose to invest your time and energy to go to see a movie absolutely so there, they want to be there oh yeah well i didn't know about too many of the other movies that were playing at the festival so that was also really nice is to you know discover other passion projects that people made and that are getting to play there and them getting to discover thing and it's a really great way to make new friends you know this is like this is giving me the feeling of being the popular kid which i never got to be in in high school or middle school so it's like well now i can feel popular and feel like i'm you know winning at something so my teenage mm -hmm. self is like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's I like you're it. talking about you know scribbling on the notebooks and what was really important you're finding the people that you actually want probably the people that's in school, right because if you weren't popular in schools people probably sucked to be honest so <laughs> <laughs> no i mean well all teenagers suck i sucked too i sucked you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I, out, I hope <laughs> uh, uh, when you're at their festivals too you know you talk about watching other movies and then uh for people who haven't been to festivals you get to you know talk with other filmmakers and actors afterwards have you uh talked with other people that you might like collaborate with you know down the road oh i hope so you know it's always you know nice to collaborate with people who you who you're already friends with i think that's the best way to go into filmmaking is you want to feel like you have a connection and on fang i didn't really know most of the people i was working with before we started working together 
but then that bond kind of you know developed over time as as you know we spend more and more time with this movie you know it becomes kind of a shared experience where did you find people now that you say that i'm like where did you find these amazing people it's the magic of the internet <laughs> <laughs> and now when the i make a bad movies, rap, but it's also it'll be the magic of connections because now yeah. i know a lot more people in the film industry now than i did before i started making fag but then it was just the magic of looking people up <laughs> yeah. uh mentioned the drawings in the movie but i really also like the poster art is, is that oh, a painting thank you. looks like a painting yeah there's that kind of like you know tentacle porn painting <laughs> i don't remember who acquired that for the set but i really like that part of the production design <laughs> <laughs> And I know uh, before we went live, you actually have the mask there with you. I do, yeah, my rat mask. <clears throat> and this is this is actually one I bought uh, on Amazon recently. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. That's better. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So I bought this uh, on Amazon recently. This is the one that we used in Fang for the Rat King, in which I wore... And Fang is a lot more elaborate than that, but that is the rat mask that I will be wearing at the Days of the Dead convention here in Chicago on Saturday to promote Fang. Oh, wow, it's this Saturday. They just whip oh, yeah. out Days of the Dead. Yeah. <laughs> now the Fang tour good. isn't over yet. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> No, uh, oh, do you have you. thoughts? On, are, are you a fan of rats in general? Like, do you have a pet rat or anything? I don't have a pet rat, but I should. Yeah, they say they're excellent pets. Yeah, they're they seem very, like it. Yeah, that's the rumor. Well, I realized while I was, you know, oh, I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh no, I was just going on about rats supposedly being. No, it's okay. Well, I go on about rats too. You know, I'm, <laughs> that's kind of my career now. <laughs> <laughs> But I was, I realized, you know, at a certain point while I was uh, working on Fang that rats are, you know, I like rats as like the metaphor because it's like a rat is something that looks kind of, you know, grotesque and, you know, terrible and all of these things on the outside and people are afraid of rats and want them removed from their homes and everything. But rats are also kind of, you know, misunderstood. They don't really mean to harm people. That's something that people have projected onto rats. So I think that works really well for Fang. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, we mentioned, you know, obviously Lynn and um, and Dylan are, are great in the movie. There's a lot of, like, uh, smaller roles that are really entertaining too, entertaining, too. Like the guy who works at the shop. Uh, I'm a big fan of this character who, you know, he's the hardware uh, store. Yeah, the hardware store. This guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can uh, I can give you this, but you got to pay in cash. This has to be off the books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The the uh, accent is great. And that that's uh that's definitely uh, more the uh, overt comedy, I think, of the movie. Is that character? Oh, thank you. No, well, he's, you know, Gabriel Freeze plays that guy, and he is a comedian and comedy actor. And then when I saw, like, his uh, audition reel, when he, when he applied for the role to audition, I was like, yeah, you know, this guy fits. I can picture him selling Billy some hardware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he totally works. <laughs> and uh, how about, like, the subplot of the TV show that's going on throughout the movie? Oh, yeah. Well, that was the, yeah, the Ron Larkin show that was actually yeah. filmed separately from the rest of Fang that was filmed in Florida in December 2019. And I guess I was still staying with my mom in Florida during that time. So I filmed it there with actors and on a film set that was in West Palm Beach. And, you know, it was, you know, it was a talk show set that is used for actual local news talk shows in South Florida. 
So it was that we, and I like Nick Masick's uh, performance as Ron Larkin. He has that very kind of uh, like, like it's the kind of guy you would see on TV mm -hmm. quality. And I really like the way that all came together. And there is a uh, twist for the fictional talk show and thing, which I don't want to give away about what happens in the last uh, segment. No, uh, was this your first I, feature film? Oh, it I'm is. Sorry, yeah. 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 And I'm that. never going to have an experience like this again, because yeah. now when I make future feature films, I get to go into it. It's like, okay, I'm expecting this part. <laughs> yeah, now you, you have kind of an idea of what you're in for. Yeah, what I'm getting into. And yeah. I didn't before I started making mm -hmm. the thing, which is why I'm really grateful for everybody that I worked with. And I think really, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to give directing advice to anyone, I would say that <clears throat> the best thing a director can do is just, you know, pick the right people to work with. Mm -hmm. Because the director has to be kind of like, you know, the general of like a little army, basically a small, non-violent army. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you, you got to kind of know a little bit about everything. And there are some things that I know more about and some things that I know less about than others. <clears throat> so I think that, you know, it's really important, you know, for a director to know what your strengths and limitations are. Mm -hmm. And when you do have limitations, which I definitely do, then you got to find the right people who know what to do in the areas that you don't know so much. So I, I've seen that you've directed some uh, short films. Um, yeah, are they I've made online? short films and videos. And I'm actually, I'm going back through like some older videos that I made. And I'm going to be remastering. Oh, cool. And re-releasing more of the stuff that I made when I was uh, younger. So I am a, I guess, yeah, I, I do make a bunch of random, you know, I'm, videos. I'm interested in, in a Fear Experiment 2. It's about a, a chicken yeah, of some oh, kind. Yeah. And, uh, it got my interest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, was, uh, that was a one-man movie. I wore a chicken mask and filmed it in my apartment with a tripod. I'm a, I'm all about. I it. love that. That's yeah. good. Oh, thank yeah. you. How did you get started in film? So you're a creative young person to start. It sounds like you know this has always been there. You're drawing in yeah. your notes. I know the feeling. Oh, thank you. And <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So how did that transition to become cinema? Well, I think part of you know being completely honest, part of the reason why I made Fang is just that, you know, I was really ambitious. You know, I really, I wanted, I really wanted to prove that I could do this and that I could do it successfully. And I wanted to be successful enough at this, that I don't have to work a shitty soul crushing job, which, you know, is, I think that's, that's, that's what, motivates a lot of people to want to be really successful in show business. And I think now at this point, you know, I'm, I'm less, you know, egotistical and less over ambitious than I used to be. Now at this point, it's, I've realized, you know, I've always been creative. I've been creative ever since I was a little kid and I just want to, you know, keep doing creative things in whatever form that might, take even if that just means setting up a tripod in my apartment I still want to do it you know and you know hopefully there's a way you know that I can continue to sustain myself while doing it but even if you know the film industry is like okay fuck you Richard you're blacklisted we don't want you to make another feature film I'm like okay but I'm still going to keep being creative anyway uh odd says uh sounds like uh the weird stuff i do makes me feel happy oh the whole oh, right yeah. on all Good. kinds of real wild stuff yes he's very passionate he's That's got like excellent. hundreds of videos of him just oh, being cool. like so weird 
and I love well, you him. Can, uh, you can message me his channel after we're done the uh, yeah, yeah. interview. Yeah, he, I'll check out some of his videos. He does reviews for the website, so maybe he can oh, review nice. Fang at some point. Yeah, yeah he, his Fang, videos are so crazy Fang's and amazing. Good. I'm like, I love this guy, and he knows stuff about movies. I'm like, Todd, please come join us. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's just a great fit. So, uh, were you always a horror movie fan? I have been for a while since I was a teenager. I didn't get into horror as young as some people do, but I have been for a while. And I think I naturally have a a dark way of uh, looking at things where I see the dark side of things. Oh, thank you, Dave. And I like your, I like your icon. <laughs> you get a great picture. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> But I think I naturally, you know, like some people are naturally like Pollyanna and my girlfriend likes to joke that I'm a Pollyanna too, but I'm kind of like Pollyanna who's, who has a dark son. So, uh, what, were the, what, what kind of stuff were you watching before horror movies? I assume you were watching, you know, either TV shows or, or some type oh, of Oh yeah, I was watching, you know, when I was a kid, I was mostly seeing like kids stuff. Yeah, TV shows, but even like these old fairy tales can be kind of, you know, yeah, a lot of those are very dark and gruesome yeah, like, when you different think different about different. it. You know, it's very like, you know, you're gonna rip open the wolf to rescue your decomposing grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> now that you put it that way, right. yeah, see, that's how I see the dark side of things. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Todd would be happy to review yeah. Fang if we can work that Excellent, out. Excellent, Todd. We'll we'll get that set up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I are, are you? I know obviously you want Fang. Uh, your your work on the Indiegogo and thing, but do you have plans to make another feature? Oh, I'm. I mean, I'm not gonna stop trying to make features unless I'm forbidden to do so by law. <laughs> I won't. I will definitely keep you know getting out there. Keep pushing for this and and do whatever I can to make it happen. Do you have any stories that you have in mind that you want to develop next? Well, it's funny because I used to talk more about my future projects, but now that I'm getting closer to it, I Mm -hmm. kind of want to surprise people more. And I think that that is, that's kind of a response that I got from some people about Fang is that people telling me I never heard of this movie before and it really surprised me. Mm. So I think that the element of, of surprise is good, but I do have several concepts that, you know, I'm working on. That's the key because people want to see more. I want to see what happens next. Oh, thank you. It really was. I was just very, 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 very impressed. Oh, thank you so much, Annabelle. And my girlfriend and I are going to be writing a script together, too, as kind of a couple's uh, bonding experience. Oh, and really cool. Oh, yeah. She's going to be drawing from some things that happened to her when she was a teenager. So we'll get both of our uh, memories in, into the movies. And then another like feature film script that I already have finished it was kind of, you know, inspired by my time living with my mom in Florida and some of the vibes that I got from that area and the dark side of that area. What, what can you say? Where in Florida? Uh, West Palm Beach. Oh, West Palm Beach. Oh, I yeah. It's pretty cold in Chicago. Well, it was like high of 65 today that it's going to be oh. getting down into the 30s next week. That's how it is here. Yeah, I have a friend that's uh, like right near you. And oh, she was cool. just telling me last night, like it's in the 60s. I'm like what? Yeah, it was warm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but next time I get a cold, I want it to be during like the cold spell. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you have the... I was going to ask, uh, so your is your girlfriend also a horror lover? Yes, she is, and uh, she loves it more 
now because she said that, you know, Richard, your passion for Fang is contagious. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm I'm happy to have given her the Fang contagion. <laughs> <laughs> Like the rats spreading the disease. You're spreading the disease. Oh, yeah. Spreading its rat wings. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that could be a kind of marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, it's what a good kind of about? pandemic. It's the fang demic. Fang <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Love it. So, so, so what are some of the. What are some of the plans for the merchandise? You're going to have Fang t-shirts? or Oh, yeah, Fang t-shirts. I'm going to sell the uh, posters that are going to sell signed copies of the script, too. And I didn't realize until relatively recently that people actually sell, like, just actual printed copies of screenplays on the Internet. So my distribution partner, Dave, and I were like, all right, you know, well, we could definitely – do that, you know, it's pretty that's pretty cheap and easy to print these. And I could print unlimited copies of the script. And I guess if anybody like in like a community theater is like, hey, we wanna act out this scene, I'm like, Yep, you can do it and Impressive. I'll be there for it. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah. I could I don't know. I'm trying to think if that could happen. Do you think that could translate? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are, but mm-hmm. well, I know I remember when I took like an acting class in uh, college, you know, I, I took two then my, you know, and I know acting teachers, like they pick out, you know, different scenes for the students mm-hmm. to act out. Usually they include Shakespeare at some point, which is really hard to act out. But they also choose more contemporary plays, too. And I guess that's not a way for me to make money from Fag, but it would be cool if somebody wants to use it for their acting class with their copy of the script. The theater adaptation of Fang. Theater. Fang goes to Broadway. (laughs) Fang the musical. Oh, yeah. Everything now, you never know. There's like Shining the musical, Evil oh, Dead. Yeah. Well, we saw Silence of the Lambs, the musical wow. was amazing. Yes. So, well, that's one thing I've learned as a filmmaker is that anything is possible. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of things that have happened in my life that, you know, if somebody made a movie that was literally the story of my life, people are like, you know, this is a crazy story it seems like a soap opera yeah this is so like melodramatic and you know having all of these random things happen but you know i could say that well you know that yeah this is what happened yeah uh when i announced you're coming on uh greg lamberson who uh used to run uh buffalo dreams fantastic oh he's a really nice guy we i couldn't make it to the Buffalo Dreams Festival, but I did talk to Greg via email, you know, and I have a really positive impression of him. He's a really nice guy, and he gave me some really good advice for releasing Fang. Oh, very good. I was going to ask if he gave you advice, because um, I've been to uh, yeah. Buffalo a few times, and I always think he's actually one of the best at uh, Q&As, because he himself is um, an independent film oh, maker yeah. for decades, and so he always... Has he asked stuff that I don't think a lot of people think about if, um, because he comes from that background and he always, uh, I think he's a guy that actually has good advice for, uh, definitely. For no, he knows, he knows a lot of stuff. So, yeah, that that's, I'm glad he, but anyway, he was excited that you were coming on and he had mentioned yeah, that, uh, you. he played at the last, uh, Buffalo Dreams and was a big fan of the movie. No, yeah, yeah, I like, I'm a fan of Greg too. Yeah, he's a, He's a really cool guy, and I'm really grateful for, you know, everybody, like everybody who had like some kind of power at a film festival who selected Fang. You know, I'm really grateful for all of you. You know, it was it was a wonderful experience for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, how about some of the locations that you used? Like, uh, were, were you know, were they people that you knew and like had a favor? Like, how did you find your locations? Well, the a lot of the locations were found at the last minute. 
because we were originally working with a location manager and then things didn't work out with him. So what from what I remember, our producer, Robert Felker, you know, and Rob is just really great at, you know, keeping things organized and and staying on top of everything and keeping the logistics of Fang from falling apart. And there was one uh, location that we had to switch midway through using it, which is the location for the main house in Fang, mm. <clears throat> which I don't know if you were able to pick up on during editing, but Billy's bedroom is actually in a different house than no, the rest no, of the not. house. Uh. It is not in the same house. And Rob scheduled it very well so that we filmed all of the scenes in Billy's bedroom first. <clears throat> so there were no issues with that. And that did not interfere with our schedule too much. Because that house that we were filming in for the original house location, it was, it was, it was a memorable house. It had uh, electrical problems, so we couldn't run like heating and the film equipment at the same time. Oh. And we were like in, in January oh. in Chicago. So what we had to do was we had to run little space heaters while we were while we weren't filming and while the film crew was setting up the shots. And then as soon as it was time, you know, for me to say action, then they would turn off the space heaters. We would film the scene, then we would turn the space heaters back on. And then later on, after we had finished filming all of the scenes in <coughs> Billy's bedroom, then the electrical problems in the house got worse the TV in the living room caught on fire, which I wish I had been there to see. That would have been really cool to put in the movie somehow. <laughs> yeah, quick, quick, get that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. And then at that point, we decided we need to move to a different house. Yeah. Not, wow. not working out. That's wild. Well, it sounds like everybody was <laughs> safe. On fire. Was the equipment? Yeah, I don't think we burned on anything. It was just, it was oh a sh God. Oh, uh oh. You're breaking up a little bit. Yeah. Uh oh, uh -oh we uh, might have. Uh, that is oh, the magic of the internet, too, is having random, random oh, blackouts. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. At least you're back now. Yeah. You are back. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I, do you still have more festivals to it uh, to uh, for Fang to play at, or is the festival run coming to an end? <clears throat> well, I hope that there will be a festival run part two next year, as Fang continues to get a higher profile and get more attention from these other festivals that it's been in. It's like, I want to more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't like you. Not at all. Not at all. From my experience with festivals, um, since this is your first uh, feature, um, <clears throat> it's harder to get in them without people knowing you previously. So yeah. I think uh, so far that you've even had this festival run and, and it's won awards and people are digging it, I think that's something to be really proud of. No, absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, it did help in terms of uh, getting into the festivals in Wisconsin that I did know the people who were running it from having been to the Milwaukee Twisted Dreams Festival in 2022. I met Chris across then, and that was shortly before I finished making Fang. So Fang couldn't have screened yet, but I did meet them. And then I met Lloyd Kaufman at the festival and I met a number of other people there too. So we got more friends who remembered me and they remembered me telling them about Fang. And then 
I was thinking, yeah, Fang's probably going to get selected next year. And I was, and then I saw, yes, it did. That's good. Yeah, and congratulations to Lynn for winning uh, best. And they don't even oh, do yeah. what congratulations, best, Lynn. Best, it's, yeah, it's not best uh, male performance, best female. Yeah. It's just per, best performance. I, I actually, yeah, oh, I like yeah. that. No, it's, you well know, deserved. it's, I mean, it's great to win, like, you know, any award. I was saying earlier is that, you know, when I was a teenager, I was an underachiever. I was never doing as well at, at school, you know, as my parents wanted me to. And then when it came to like winning sports, it was like sports, what sports? They're not going to select me for these teams. So now it's a good feeling is that, <laughs> and I do feel kind of like, you know, like a teenager on prom night when I'm going <laughs> to these, like, this is like prom for like weird, you know, indie <laughs> filmmakers, basically. I think that's a good way to put it. I like Oh, that. thank you. Yeah. And uh, where can people uh, follow you and follow Fang to see uh, where it goes? Or well, you can to? look me up on uh, Facebook. You can look up the official Fang the movie page on Facebook. And I'm going to have my website up and running soon. I've been saying oh, this cool. for years, but now I finally... <laughs> Conquered enough of the other work I have to do that I can actually have a functional professional website, Richard Bergen. Yeah. I've been working on the Severed Limbs Festival for, for about oh, a year. Oh, yeah. It, it'll oh, be up yeah. there. Make sure you keep them for a little while for the yeah. festival. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank and, you. Uh, when you have, and when you have the link up for the Indiegogo, let us know and we'll add the uh, will, link yeah. to the interview and put it up on the website. No, I, I hope to have it up like shortly after we're done this interview. Like, and I was hoping okay. to have it published before the interview, but you know, in classic Richard style, <laughs> I was getting things done at the last minute, and then I told I told Dave, my distribution partner, I'm like, all right, I'm about to start the interview. Now you can look over this campaign I created while I'm being interviewed, and then we could publish it after the interview is over so it's like two birds with one stone definitely yeah and it'll be done in time to put up with the uh with the podcast so people can uh check it out yeah oh yeah no it's gonna be great and yeah you know it's an honor to be on the world's uh longest running horror podcast and you know i saw when i looked you guys up that you have some guests on multiple times so i would always be happy to come yeah, back definitely. on. We'd love to have you back. I unleash more of my projects to the world. Absolutely. Definitely, yeah. We have yeah. you back. Dave Dave called it out, the good vibes. You put out good vibes. Oh, thank you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I and agree Dave 100%. Good, Dave, because my distribution partner is Dave Rakita, too. So I have oh, good luck good with name. Dave. Dave's in company, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I, I love the movie. I know oh, Annabelle loves you. the movie. And uh, we're going to have Lynn on to talk about it probably in January because she's booked up for a while and she's been excited to talk about the movie too. So, no, oh, yeah, cool. oh, yeah, or like a uh, Lynn, mm -hmm. it's going to be pretty oh. great. And I know that you know she is very passionate about Fang. I think she would be really happy to talk to you guys, and I'm really mm -hmm. grateful that she told you guys about me. Yes. I'm very happy about it. Yeah. I definitely hope you do get in your second round of festival runs because I would love to see this at the theater. No, excellent. yeah, well, It'd be great. Oh, I, I've given the same back to you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and no, and that's something I've also thought about. You know, doing too is that if the Indiegogo campaign is successful enough. We could even just start running out, you know, different theaters to do different fang screenings in different cities and everything to kind of like spread word of mouth around these events. And that's what I did for the premiere. I rented the Davis Theater in Chicago on a Tuesday night for the we had a, a Tuesday night budget, not a Saturday night budget. 
But well, I will say that there's, there's a lot of stuff there. Neil and I are invited to that's like this super big stuff. I'm like, just this, for this coming week. You know, last week, there was like a big movie, and they're like, you're invited to come to the premiere oh, wow. on Tuesday. Yeah, hey, you guys like, should go. Ah. So if anybody good... invites me to big stuff, you know, I'm going, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to miss out. I'm still in the luxuriating and show business <laughs> stage. I'm not over it yet. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it to Milwaukee. It would have been great to meet you there and, and, and see yeah, you been great on the big screen. Show. But uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll run into everything each other I can another one. to make sure more theaters show fang i'll try to get some more screenings of it in your area i believe you live in boston yeah there's some really great local theaters too oh like yeah really we have one that does midnight movies uh, and there's cool. some indie very very old theaters where people really really care about that's awesome no and fang you know screened at the shana shea memorial film festival oh, yeah. in massachusetts and I think yeah. we won the most awards there. And Dylan was there for that screening, so that was really wonderful. Was wonderful. Yeah. That was just his past year? Oh. That was uh, in September. Wow. We must have been doing another thing in September. Yeah, well, I've actually well, never been like to the Shana Shea uh, uh, Film Festival, and I've always wanted to go. Since next year, sometime. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I even have a I have a Shauna Shea trophy up here, and I've never been to the festival. Oh, I have mine on my. Well, you can't see them on here. That I have mine on this. I have like a little like knickknacks table, and I'm like, that's where I'll put them for now. I don't sure. have a trophy yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, yeah. <laughs> now you're yeah, you need you need a trophy room, but yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> But oh, before I don't know if you you I'm sure you don't mind me mentioning before we went live, Annabelle uh, Richard saying that uh, him and his girlfriend hope to make a Halloween room uh, where where they it'll be up all year round. I love it. We do. That's super cool. Yes. Yeah, and at this point, you know, I kind of want to have my own house because I've been living in an apartment studio apartment since 2020. So my girlfriend and I want to get our own house and it will be a halloween all year round kind of house uh, <laughs> oh the whole house i thought it was one room but okay the whole house well, especially like that room but oh, okay. the house in general. i love it yeah oh thank you yeah all right and uh you can also check out um you, you did an interview was that with your girlfriend the uh the podcast you sent me that or? is and my girlfriend is isabella rachel and you know she is you know very beautiful and charming and wonderful and unfortunately in the uh link that you know i said to you it was an audio recording so you don't get to see either of our faces but you know she does have you a very so beautiful the cell phone out and yeah like here she is oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah no but you know it and she is from Rio de Janeiro originally. Okay. She is a native oh, uh, Portuguese well, speaker. And when we went to the Milwaukee Twisted Dreams Film Festival, we saw a short film called uh, Human Animal, which was by a director named Gustavo, came from Portugal mm -hmm. to the to see the festival in Milwaukee. So that was a really good experience uh -huh. yeah. for her is that we just walked in and she was like, Wow, this is in Portuguese. This is really yeah. cool. No, oh, yeah, that's pretty wild. That's yeah, yeah, Dave's all about it. Uh, great idea, twenty four seven Halloween room. I like your way of thinking, Dave. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Well, it's been great. It really has. Yeah, this has I'm been really fun. To it. Yeah, so we'll definitely have you back for sure. Oh yeah, I'll be back. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, if you have Isabella come along, that's totally cool. Yeah, I would definitely. I think she would be happy to. But, you know, I think yeah, that you know she would. She would be happy to give a new uh, perspective on the Richard Bergen story. <laughs> I'm there for it. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, we're going to uh, go to a quick break. We're going to play some music from the Atomic Psychos, and then we'll be back with the Excellent. Atomic Psychos here momentarily. So well, thank you, Richard. Wonderful. Thank, thank you, you so much, Neil. Thank you, Annabelle. Uh, it was absolutely. great talking to you guys. Great you as well. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. And get better. Perfect. And have I a great time. Uh, I am at, better now. I sounded, I sounded yeah. like, <laughs> like before. <laughs> This yeah. is a big improvement. Oh, it's improved. All right. <laughs> and have a great time at the convention. Yeah. Oh, you too. Yeah. You have a great time with the Atomic Psychos. That is a wonderful right. band name. They're great. It is <laughs> wonderful for us. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi. You like oh, it? Elvis Dardo, it's really nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too, man. <laughs> oh, hey, nice. are you are. Doing? We're here with the Atomic Psychos. Our Woo! Without your Very head. cool. So you're, yeah, your guys had a really great song, you know, that is like my kind of uh, music. It's very like... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, dude. Yeah. Is that a pretty good that, taste? I, yes, he does have good taste. How would you describe your music? Well, Lapis, present yourself. Yeah, how we would describe your music? Uh, I'd say, um, I'd say horror, <coughs> horror rockabilly, uh, wild horror rock rockabilly. Is really cool. Yeah. Uh, we Dave would like to Billy from Mexico City. I mean, we we it's it's classified as psychobilly, but um, there there are there are there are tones and there are colors to psychobilly, and we would like to um, we'd like to say we like to say we we play uh, an old school kind of psychobilly instead of uh, it, I mean, so, um, like in the in the modern. Uh, in the modern styles, uh, there's not much of uh, those uh, rockabilly um, kind of tones and kind of kind of intentions. Uh, so what we're trying to do is uh, pick up on what uh, the the early bands were trying to were trying to um, give to the to the audience. Yeah, I'd say it's horror rockabilly. Yeah. Yeah, I, think I heard it. Really and I just well. loved it. Yeah. yeah. What were you saying, Annabelle? I was just saying when I I just went to the horror punk site and was just seeing well, who can I find for bands, and I heard you guys, and I was like, these dudes are excellent. And then I just went and found you, I think, on Bandcamp, and listened to more. I'm like, all right, we we gotta we gotta figure this out. We gotta get these guys on the show. So, oh, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. Absolutely. Uh, actually, it's. It's kind of a miracle some somebody finds out about us since psychobilly has always been the underground part of the underground music, you know? <laughs> it definitely, yes. 
Uh, Dave, oh. Dave, Dave Deadman here says, I have to assume y'all are big fans of the greatest band of all time, The Cramps. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> we can all agree on that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how did you guys meet? How how many are there? Are more than five of you? There's a bunch of you. Uh, we are four. Um, let me tell you the story, a little story, you know, uh, about the Atomic Psychos. We were born around 2013 by the mastermind behind us, Seb Rodriguez, as known as Reverend Joe, as known as the Devil's Advocate. We mm -hmm. pump him out on the upright bass and Alfred on the drums. Compi is now playing on quattro and Alfred is now uh, the guitar leader on, on Marcianics. Two amazing uh, Mexican bands. Yeah. I wasn't in the band from the beginning because I was in another band named uh, Omega Man, like the movie. Mm -hmm. But Pep was my friend since before. So I told him that Omega Man haven't uh, a lot of shows and we didn't go in anywhere. Long story short, I was playing with Atomic Psychos uh, a month later. As time went by, we were changing members, members uh, like Underwear, not so much, but for special occasions. <laughs> I, I personally have a very good relationship uh, with each and every member who has played with us. There wasn't anything bad in their splits, just the free time, the free time maybe yeah. we couldn't uh, rehearse or go out to play at the same time. Mm -hmm. Our present lineup is me on the screaming, uh, Pep Rodriguez on the guitar, Dr. Lepus, as uh, you know, on the upright bass, and our new acquisition is Bruno Ocaña at the mm -hmm. drum. He played with me before on my last band, and he's super cool, super fun, very easy going, and he's fitting in very well with us. So how That's long good. have Atomic Psychos been in existence? I saw like a graphic, like one of the first drawings <coughs> in the Facebook page, and I'm like, this is, they've been doing this a while. Well, like, like 10 years, uh, I'm with Atomic Psychos in like, yeah, uh, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. I think Dr. Lepus, I think you're uh you're uh, muted. Uh, <coughs> I tried to unmute him, but uh says he oh. cannot uh, yeah, yeah. 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 I can hear you now. All right, very good. No worries. So um you know you guys are from Mexico. Is Rockabilly a big thing in Mexico? No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Well, well not. Not, not the biggest thing, you know. Uh, but we have a lot of bands. We have a small scene, um, a small rock build scene, uh, like everywhere, you know. <laughs> well, I think it's cool. I think it would be more unique there. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, the, the only bad thing is that the people, the, the consumers, uh, don't think the same. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The internet, you know, you, you can get your music out all over the world, which is, you know, the world's a lot smaller today with uh, with the internet. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Let, let, let me mention uh, some some bands that I like uh, from here. Sure. I have, I have mentioned Marcianics, uh, Quattro as well, but T Rex are improving so much. My favorite new band is. Poseído por el profeta del nopal, possessed by the prophet of the cactus. Mm. It is a reference of an old uh, Mexican rocker, Rodrigo Gonzalez, who died on the 80s earthquake, uh, 1985 to be completely accurate. Another band I like uh, from here are the oldest of them all, um, still rocking Los Pardos. And a few other, but I'm letting my friend name his favorites. <laughs> I what? want to have like a, a list compiled of excellent <laughs> Mexican music that I should discover. I want that list too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lepus, your your favorite bands from Mexico? Oh, my, my favorite uh, psychobilly bands from from Mexico, I'd say. 
Uh, in the first place, I, I'm not sure. I, I know uh, Calavera isn't uh, completely for, from Mexico, but they, they totally identify as, as Mexicans. So mm -hmm. in the first place, I'd say Calavera. In the second place, I'd say um, okay. you, you have to hear uh, uh, The Mighty Dead Rabbits. They're, it's a great mm -hmm. band. It's a great psychobilly band. Uh, they have this uh, amazing sort of tone at the guitar. Um, and perhaps I'd say... Um, I'd say most definitely uh, T-Rex is, is actually becoming uh, bigger and bigger each gig I see them. Uh, you, you must hear their... their um, There's some this song they have this song called uh, Blood on the Motorcycle. It's a great song. Um uh that that's that's uh, mostly my top three. Yeah. So who who were some of your guys' influence, you know, to, to get into Rockabilly to begin with? Uh, the for me it, it's been uh it's always been the Coffin Cats. Uh, yeah. more recently uh The crewmen and the meteors have been such a great influence uh, for for uh, precisely for songwriting. I like to I, I'd like to adopt some some more of an old school style, not not so much into gothabilly, but um, I'd say Coffin Cats, Meteors, and the crewmen are one of my greatest influences. Well, for me, my favorite UK bands are obviously the Meteors, but I do not consider myself too pure. So I, I like a lot other bands like Crewmen, Long Tall Texans, more rockabilly style, not more happy, uh, restless, or newer ones. Um, but with legendary members like Guido Slingers, Master Cole. Scarecrows of uh, known as from the Waltons and um, the American bands I, I love um, could be from the legendary Shake Shakers uh, and every JD Wilkes project to the Goddamn Gallows and everything in between. The, yeah. the Goddamn Gallows, I know they are 20 years old, but, but I think they still have a fresh, a fresh sound. A little bit folky with the mandolin and the washboard, but at the same time, uh, heavy and loud, uh, like us. Uh, from Canada, I love Reagan Cowboys and, of course, the Brains. I could mention bands from every country. I don't discriminate. I, I'm yeah. interested in psychobilly in general. Well, uh, speaking of that, uh, where have you guys played? Have you guys played primarily Mexico or have you guys traveled to other countries? We we've only played Mexico so far, but uh, we intend to um, to to make a to make a, a Europe tour. So since it's uh, since Mexican music is always uh, so warmly received in the in the in the old continent, um, mm -hmm. but so far it's only been in 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 our own country. I yeah. welcome you guys to come play here in Chicago too. I would love to go to Chicago. I, I know a friend um, from here, from Querétaro, uh, who is living there. Uh, well, uh, there's a band uh, oh, cool. called Romeo and the Frankensteins. Mm -hmm. uh, they are friends of mine. Uh, and they live in Querétaro and they live in Chicago both. Nice. Uh, but I, I would love to go to USA, but It's a lot of paperwork to enter the U.S. Yeah. The visa and the cabinet inspection are my biggest concern, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Plus the price sense, of yeah. a hot dog. The price of, of, a, of a hot dog, geez. What the freak, man? I can pay the rent of a month in here with that. Uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be honored at making uh, a dream come true. If I can play with atomics everywhere outside of our country, yeah. Actually, uh, oh, now yeah. that you mention, uh, th there's there's uh, 
have you heard Frankie Bats band or, or Frankie Bats newer band, the Atomic Bats? Uh, perhaps it would be uh, a great gig, the Atomic Psychos and the Atomic Bats. Yeah, How about Atomic that? Night. That yeah. Atomic <laughs> yeah, and the Atomic Molotov, perhaps. <laughs> the Atomic Duo. An atomic, atomic yeah. Duo, right? yeah, yeah, that's, that's better than double atomic. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we are a horror movie show as well. Are you guys uh, horror movie fans? Of course. Are we, are we horror movie fans? <laughs> yes, of course we are. Of course we are. We, we would be uh, terrible psychobillies if we were <laughs> horror fans. They kind of go, they oh. kind of come to the territory. Yeah. yeah. I, I have been a horror fan since I was a child. I remember when I watched Nightmare on Elm Street 3 for the first time on a Sunday night. It was a lovely shot. I was so amazed by the special effects, the, the scene of, of the pizza or Freddy's belly. The same happened to me when I watched Total Recall and I saw the Quattro oh, yeah. scene. Yeah. <laughs> like, when I was a kid, oh, yeah, <laughs> when I'm the baby, the baby. When I was a, a kid, uh, all the Sunday nights I used to watch the TV with my mother. I remember Alfred Hitchcock presents the Twilight Zone, Amazing Stories, the series. I grew up uh, watching Lost in Space, The Adam Family, The Monsters, The Beverly Hillbillies, The Benny Hill Show. It was pretty obvious I was gonna fall for Zach Billy, right? <laughs> oh yeah, from, no, it's, from, it's from all kind of natural synthesis of all of this stuff coming together that it, it ends up inspiring people in different ways but you know once you get into like the creepy stuff it kind of sticks with you for life exactly my, yeah. my, my head was like that well all of that all the all of that culture makes me like like these <laughs> I, I have to remember uh, uh from mexico i watched the la hora marcada do you know the market hour or the appointed time where Guillermo del Toro, uh, El Chivo Lubezki, and Alfonso Cuaron started their careers. Later, I found B movies, C movies, door classics like Brian Jusna's Society, uh, Street Flash, so Video Hall, Video Drum, Bad Taste, Henry, Night, yeah. Day, Dawn of the Dead, Hellraiser, uh, The Fly. The thing, then I fall for Hong Kong Cat 3 movies, Japanese Kenya Peak series, all my own series, etc., etc., etc. And I decided to study makeup and special effects. I have worked in short films, TV commercials, and I like to make masks, masks, and figures. I also have a brand of soaps inspired in horror icons. I sculpted, I sculpted uh, by myself. Uh, the name is Coffin Soaps. Uh, we do international shipping. I'm gonna look this up. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh yeah. I like this coffin soaps. Coffin soaps. Yeah. How about oh, yourself, Olympus? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, take a visit to to my page. Coffin soap. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Uh, how about yourself, uh, Doctor Lepus? Who? What are some of your favorite horror movies or shows? Actually, I, I'm uh, on the other on the other hand. I'm in when it comes to horror movies, I'm more into modern horror. I like uh, whatever um, whatever haunted house uh, movie that that comes out. I I instantly go and and watch it to the theater. I actually uh, I still enjoy going to the movie theater. Uh, I think it's uh, it it's, it has certain magic to it. But um, I'd say uh, I don't know what what is the the original the original title. Uh, I think it's so, some maybe some of you uh, some of you guys in the in the comment section can Google it. But it's uh, así en la tierra como en el infierno. Uh, I, I it's it's about. Uh, some urban urban explorers and they go into the in, uh, they go into the sewer 
Universe of Paris, and they oh. actually find a gate to hell. I don't, I don't remember the original. Oh, that movie. sounds so familiar. Yeah, yeah and, and you know what that is. The, uh, the, actually, the real one is as uh, above something oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, above, so below, something like that. As, as above, above, so, so below. below. Yeah, and there's this scene uh, when they come, uh, when they walk into a cha chamber and there's this choir uh, singing like some uh, Gregorian chant. And mm -hmm. it's that that did it totally did it for me. It's actually sometimes I dream about that scene and wow. it's not a nightmare. It's a great, I, I think it's, it would be so cool to to jam with those uh, evil uh, Gregorian chant monks. <laughs> it's pretty uh, awesome, and and you feel that evil energy uh, just <laughs> running through your chest. It's uh, that's my favorite movie. I'm sorry, sorry, I don't remember the title. Some maybe you guys in the comment section can uh, uh, help me out working this um, and. Also, uh, I'd say The Grudge, that, that one I yeah. remember the title, and um, perhaps um, uh, um, I don't remember the title either. You <laughs> trust me, you love horror movies. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, and, and I actually, the, the worst part is I, I watch the movies in as above, so below. Thank yeah. you so very much. That's, that's my uh, that's my uh, all over favorite horror movie. And um, how is this? Uh, help me out, Bastardo. It's uh, the, I, I remember the yeah. That's it. That's I remember the poster. director is James Wan. Oh, that's um, a great poster. So uh, it, it became um, it became a franchise. The Conjuring. Yes, yes, yeah. that, that one. That's my. Uh, I'd say that's my third favorite. Uh, so as you can see, I'm more of a, a modern modern horror uh, guy. Yeah. I, actually, my my favorite kind of horror uh, movies is uh, Haunted House. Haunted House all the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually writing a song about that. It's called the Haunted. Haunted House Blues, but it's in Spanish. Oh, yeah. Are you going to write about the Gregorian chant? <laughs> oh, that's a great title. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that would be a great idea oh, to yeah. have the, the Gregorian chant maybe as an intro with that. Mm, kind of. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Even though, I, like, when you said this idea about it going through your chest and feeling it, I'm like, that's such a great oh, vision. That is yeah, yeah. Actually, that, that, that's my uh, that's my favorite recurrent dream. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, it's um, so. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, I I, I really enjoy every time Friday the Thirteenth. It's uh, especially when in the in this scene when when paramedics pick up the the. Pick up the Jason and he's slaughtered them. It 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 has a special special feeling to me since I work as a paramedic. So it, I I would be really honored to be slaughtered by that guy uh, in duty. <laughs> well, you live the horror every day, man. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, uh, <laughs> it I, it fits right in. Uh, sometimes my my coworkers go, "Oh my God, it was such a gory." And uh, an awful scene, and I and I'm like, whoa! Did you see that all that blood? And, and I'm a, I'm also a nerd, so uh, it, when it comes to uh, to my my job, I'm kind of geeky. So I'm like, well, yeah, you have to. Uh, per perhaps if we take account of the blood that was on the floor, maybe it's one or two liters. So uh, perhaps the patient <laughs> it's uh, going through a state of uh, shock and. I go blah 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 blah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm such a huge nerd. <laughs> but but I enjoy horror. I enjoy living and studying horror as well. That is a good the story. That could be a film. <laughs> now Richard's yeah. gonna steal your story and turn it into a new movie. There, there, there's, there's, uh, there's, I don't know what might happen. When well, 
There's actually a movie about a, a, a paramedic that goes insane. It's the the main actor is Mel Gibson. Uh, it's um, he already looks kind of insane. Like yeah. Before it's going insane. <laughs> oh, there's, one, there's, one Nicholas, there's one with Nicolas Cage. It's uh, it's actually, called Bringing Up the Dead. I think it's the Nicolas Cage oh, yeah. one, and it's so yeah. good. It's yeah, really, that, really good. that's a great movie, also. Yeah. But uh, he kind of suffers the the horror in the in at, at the at work, uh, and and he he's kind of a snowflake. I'm sorry, but he, <laughs> maybe he he doesn't have the <laughs> to work as a paramedic. <laughs> if he's going to cry uh, after each call, he's perhaps he should uh, go go into another line. Go work. find something else to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and 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 in the end of the movie, he, I yeah, think he's. Yeah, <laughs> sorry for for being such a hardcore. But... No. <laughs> I think you're right. I think if you do a job and you cry all the time, it's probably not the place for you to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you 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 must be kind of uh, thick skinned to do yeah. that thing. Uh, and also, my my coworkers have to have to shove down their tr their throats, uh, psychobilly. Uh, with the the volume of the stereo all the way up, uh, watch after watch. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, you a pretty that's good work environment for what it sounds like. Based on what yeah. you described, that sounds pretty. That sounds like a pretty like yeah. I'd work in that office. <laughs> yeah, that's my. <laughs> another day in the office. Yeah, another day in the office. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, it, it's also funny because uh, some some of my co-workers they have this oh I'm such a huge hero vibe and I just make fun of them no you're just another healthcare worker get over it how did you end up getting that job like what put you that route well um Actually, the the my my artistic name, uh, Doctor Lepus, is uh, it, it kind of fits into my real life since I am uh, I am a, a dentistry uh, uh, dentistry student. Well, I I finished school, but I am I am doing the paperwork so I can get my degree, and in the meantime, uh, I I took the the. The technical class, uh, so I could land the jobs uh, to pay for the for the bills uh, for for studying materials and stuff, and so it kind of uh, it kind of goes along together. I I really don't see myself working uh, at a job with with a nine to five how uh, schedule. I, I think uh, it found me. More, more, more than I found the job, um, but in the end, this this particular uh, this particular gig, it's um, it's because uh, the 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 school where I took paramedic class uh, after EMT class um, through uh, through a uh, um, made, made the, the recommendation to to certain. Uh, to, to the, the whole class, uh, it was like, well, the, there's uh, there's going to be open positions for the 911 uh, Mexico uh, City, and we since they pay better than private EMS, uh, we we all took it. <laughs> yeah, it, it it found me more than I found yeah. it. Just like just like with Psycho and yeah. just like with horror movies, it, I I didn't do anything. They it, things just uh, fit right in. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when you said you were writing the the one song in Spanish, um, so you have you have some music in Spanish, some in English. Is it uh, uh, what's the thought process there, and is it harder for you to write music in English? Uh, actually, I'd say it's uh, well, well, th this is going to be uh, perhaps a little controversial, but it's actually easier to uh, or at least for me to write uh, a song in english since spanish is more of a it's more of a, a complicated language and english 
it, it just works better with rhythm. And Spanish uh, has so many... Uh, um, it is. It just has so many uh, different ways uh, of saying something. Of saying something, and it it doesn't always sound good. Sometimes, uh, if you directly translate uh, a song to Spanish, it just sounds cheesy. And in English, everything just sounds cool. So, um, I I'd say I, I so I can say as well yeah. that. I I started writing songs in English and all my buddies were like, yeah, your, your songs are nice, but what about uh, writing something in your own language? Mm. And it's uh, it's always been harder for me to write songs in Spanish. What, what, about, what about understanding, man? Uh, that, that is the same, uh, the same story. Uh, we, we love your song, uh, it sounds great, uh, but what the hell does it say? Uh, <laughs> we, we, we don't have a lot of English speakers. Uh, we, we think uh, English sounds better to us, but, well, I, I don't know for you that native English speakers, uh, you have to adapt. I think you have to adapt uh, the language uh, because there are a lot of Spanish bands and Argentinian bands that adapt very well in the Spanish to the timing and sounds great. Uh, I think it's it's not just the English. Uh, we uh, on Atomic Psychos um, we we create like this tip. Uh, Pep Rodriguez, the guitarist, uh, usually makes the song, makes the melody. He passes it on to me, and then I write uh, the English song. If he doesn't like the the Spanish version, uh, and we we make like that. Or if if we don't have a lyric, we, if we don't have lyrics, uh, I make I make it. Uh, I write it. But um, I think we we are we are improving uh, our composition styles to to talk to every band member. Uh, like now, we we have uh, another one new song uh, that is written by Dr. Lepus. Uh, he he also have uh, his side project that is because that is why he's saying that about uh, writing in Spanish or English he's doing great he's doing great yeah I think it's I know one thing that I do a lot of times if I if I hear a band like I went to find lyrics to your music and I think I found one song and then lost it again but if you put out lyrics, people will read them. Well, some people. I will read them. Dave Deadman will probably read them too. We, we, we can always we can always post them or or hand them to you. It's you you just have to ask for them. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. So, there are a lot of bands yeah. that you fall in love just by the lyrics. Uh, you say, oh, I I connect with that lyric. I, I connect with that." Uh, it's mine. You make those lyrics like, oh, that's just me. Uh, that, that happens to me a lot with Oingo Boingo. Uh, <laughs> I think every song is written for me. <laughs> I know Danny Hoffman does know me, but uh, you can you can uh, make a connection with the um, with the one who's listened to you. Definitely, absolutely. Yeah. Are you a fan of Forbidden Zone, the movie? Oh, of course, of course, it's the greatest of the great. When is she coming on, Neil? I just <laughs> Anastasia yeah. Elfman, who is the wife of Richard, Richard Elfman. Elfman, who made that movie brother of of danny elfman she's gonna come on the show is it next week 
Uh, well, next week's Thanksgiving, so we have, we have to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so come on and be in the chat. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> she actually was going to come on tonight, but we had a we had a lot of guests, so we we didn't think yeah. it would work. Out. Oh, if we would have so known, we could have done it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But no, she'll be on soon. Uh, she's very cool. Uh, I was in a movie with her. She's a very nice person. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also the song and the movie than in the movie. Mm -hmm. And also the song by the Misfits, Forbidden Song. It's mm. a good yeah. Actually, I, I think the Misfits have uh, have a song for each cult movie. Uh, perhaps I'm. I'm <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. But but they're, they're all great. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm uh, per perhaps I'm being such a fanboy, but. I, <laughs> I just love. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe if they, fart, I'm gonna like it. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry for being such a fanboy. No, no, that's no, no. We, we, we all, we all like love the Muppets, man. We're here, we're here because we we love our we love our horror. We like thrive on it. We're all like that. So uh, don't uh, worry about it. Actually, <laughs> did someone did someone say? Uh, say, uh, cramps. Yes, yeah, Dave Dittman. Oh, yeah. very nice. Oh, yeah. How about that? I made it as well. Like oh, you made it. That is really That's wild. Yeah. Amazing. You like it? Thank you, wow. man. Thank you, guys. That's really oh. good. Wow. Where where can people find your uh your artwork? Well, uh, I have a page on Facebook. Is hell yeah. How do you spell that? Hell yeah. With a hell like oh, this. Okay, hell yeah. All right. For, very good. Yeah. Oh, I got to add yeah. doctor back in here. Awesome. Oh. Lepus is back. He is Where back. Where did you go, man? Back. Saving lives. Can we hear you? I think you might uh, be uh, muted. Maybe some signal, <coughs> signal issues happening. You yeah, might have a bad uh, connection here. Yeah. He's maybe uh, saving life. He <laughs> could be, right, right. Could be? <laughs> yeah. Got something very important. He's like, going on. Eh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Him. right. He's not gonna cry <laughs> about it like the guy in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> what what's the what's the history what's the history behind your name, El Best uh El Best? Well, well, that's uh because of my father. <laughs> the story tells so <laughs> Does it all? <laughs> <laughs> he he said he went for cigarettes. Uh, he went out for cigarettes, and I don't think the the stories. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah, hi. I'm in the same boat. Uh, you know, my dad wasn't around, so screw him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got a good name out of it, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, that got my attention right away when you signed in. It was like, oh, hey, I'm with Sparta. I'm like, yeah, it feels good saying that. <laughs> uh, doctor, I believe, is back with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here, guys. Sorry. I'm having some uh, some uh, internet issues, but uh, but I'm back. Yeah, no worries. How about the name itself, Atomic Psychos? Uh, is there a story behind the origin of the name? Well, I bet uh, Bastardo has uh, has a better side to it. <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, it was like that when I came. No, it's a, it's a cool name. That's all we need to know. So yeah. Oh yeah. That Rodriguez knows. This is this is when you when you when you have to make up a cool story. To... <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start. It was uh, when the Chernobyl uh, happens, you know. Uh, Pep Rodriguez was playing guitar, and he he thought maybe we could uh, use that atomic uh, atomic and uh, some nuclear force to make some music. Let's name it as Atomic Psychos. I like it. I like you you it. could oh, have yeah. said you could have said uh, 
we we were going to uh, be called the nukes first but then they said we were uh, psychos and then we just said oh yeah atomic psychos works it works great so um uh, i'm sorry we will I, I promise we 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 will come up with a, a cooler story <laughs> next time <laughs> <Stay back. laughs> well, because nuclear energy is better <laughs> that, that would be <laughs> oh, don't, uh, don't you get me started on that bastardo <laughs> <laughs> there are books, man. There are books. <laughs> and I like the I like the logo we've been using for the show here. It's very cool. Uh, do you know who created yeah, the logo? Oh uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, Bastardo yeah, uh, designed that one. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I like it a lot as well, especially with the, with the with the purple and 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 green shades. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's uh. It looks like uh, it looks like 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 psycho Billy magic, you know. We had yeah, it in all colors. Rocket, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's like oh, who's that? Oh, that's another There's one. Like this one as well. I had to show it up. Oh, that is really cool. Mm -hmm. And it's on that my on my upright. If you uh, the, this is actually an unsolicited an unsolicited upright base pick. Yes. Oh, nice! Uh, how, wow. how about that? I, I I just had to show off my 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 Mexican Billy uh, hybrid strings. <laughs> so, sorry if this is is unsolicited, oh, but okay. no, it's really it's fine. Uh, yeah. There's another misfit sticker on there, and yeah, yeah. It's, I like those cords. They are thick. <laughs> yeah, you like them thick, like, don't you? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you can say the same about strings, but I know you like them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so oh. what would you say is like uh, some of your most personal tracks? Not necessarily your favorite, but ones that like mean the most to you. Oh, um, for me, it's for me, it's uh, actually um, we haven't uh, recorded that one yet, but I wrote a song for the band. I don't usually do since I think my um, my songs are a bit cheesier than Pep's, but uh, we have this song called Radioactive Stumping Crew, and it, it kind of uh, tells the story about what we think and what we behave as a band. I hope you can get to hear it soon, but on the other hand, there's, um, there's Estrangulador, I, I actually, um, it, it's not that personal when it comes to lyrics for me, but um, writing that, that particular bass line, it's, uh, it really meant so much since it, it was the, the, the first time I actually uh, got, got into a recording studio. So it's, um, it's really, really close. Uh, uh, to me, when when it comes to uh, to memories and, and and experiences, and I also uh, had the chance to to um, to imprint what I what 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 the the vision the, the vision I had for this song. It was the first time I had the the the, the chance to print the sound <coughs> I uh, I expected as a band. And the sound I I actually want to hear when I hear a psychobilly when I listen to a psychobilly tune. So for me is uh, estrangulador. I, I don't know about you, bastardo, uh, but estrangulador is uh, is such a special track to me. Yes, and you did it uh, very well. You did it very very well. Yeah, thanks, man. I Another song we have uh, that is inspired by the novel was uh, the H.G. Wells, The War of the Worlds. Oh, very cool. Nice. Uh, or in yeah. Spanish, is uh, La Guerra de los Mundos. Uh, other, other two songs, because we, inspire, we, ha we are inspired by a lot of uh, horror culture. But Pip. The, the guitar rest has never yeah, been yeah. on the closet. He has always as uh, he has always admitted that he is an otaku, 
I only watch horror, gory, or sci-fi animals, but he watched everything. And in the band, he proposed two songs. In uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Horror I'm, animals. Sorry, but the, uh, the the term for uh, the term in English is weebu. Oh. What? Well, sounds like. So, sounds like nerdy. <laughs> Touch a ghoul that we have already recorded uh, in our first album, well, EP, and Chainsaw Man that we are still in process of composition. Uh, another, uh, well, I love all the songs, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm making a list of all the songs that we have, and I love them all. Uh, Kajus is another of my patients, uh, and Godzilla is a fast rockabilly that we try to imagine in a Mexican psychobilly scenario. A little bit drunk and a little bit high, Kaiju dancing and sometimes passionate because uh, <laughs> he knows a girl, you know? I love it, yeah. A another one. Them. Uh, uh, another one that I, and that I'm planning to release uh, another video. Uh, I've been working on since the last EP uh, on 19 uh, 19. <laughs> How old am I? On 2019. The song's name is Budu Budu. I met the shots uh, of us playing, but we suddenly have to change our drama, um, Giovanni that I take for the video and we started with our last drummer Lumpen we stopped playing the song so I forgot it but I've been searching into my old stuff uh, my old videos and I still want to finish it even if it's two drummers later yeah absolutely no you gotta finish it yeah ha have you seen our, our videos I yes, I have not yet, but I will. Okay. I definitely you will. You have to. Maybe I could even direct one of your videos someday. I'm just blatantly asking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. talking, talking about directing uh, our videos, uh, the necrophilia uh, mm -hmm. video was written, uh, uh, screenplayed, and directed by Dr. Lapis. Uh, I, I was uh, in charge of the editing and uh, gory scenes, all the special effects, but let's Dr. Lapis talk about it. Yeah, uh, speaking of the necrophilia video, it's, um, it, was a ton it was lots of work and it was it was so stressful for the whole band, but in the end, uh, the final result, um, it, it was so astonishing to see the whole band in, in, in screen and, and the, the shots with the, with the, um, with the makeup you did for Camila, they, they were just so amazing. And um, actually ne necrophilia is, uh, is, it's homonymous, uh, it shares the name with, with uh, as you may uh, know, it shares the name with uh, a song by Necromanics. And we we wanted to, to do our version of what necrophilia would mean for us. And we we approached it in, in a in more of a in more of a class B horror uh, kind of approach. And it, it if you if you pay a little attention, it, it's not. Uh, I mean, it's not hard to see, but it also has uh, references to to cool movies like Reanimator, and as maybe maybe you should actually uh, check out. There's two versions of the video. There's the 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 official version and the director's uh, cut version. Uh, we. Um, we had some um, we had some um, artistic uh, or or point of view uh, differences be between Bastardo and me, but we sorted it out as 
Well, uh, the, the, the differences uh, and the controversies, it's, they're, they're just going to give us more material to show to our audience. The, it, it, we, we, we tried to, um, we tried to, uh, to approach it in a, in a more creative than, than an, a destructive way. More, uh, the, there's actually lots of bands that don't make it through this process of, of creating new stuff and, and, and trying to reach um, more audiences. Most of the, uh, most of the local bands everywhere, they 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 release a, a first EP and then they split up. So we we tried to uh, to make a different approach to it. And uh, a year after we released the official version, we released the director's cut version. Um, well, uh, perhaps there's uh, a bit of a conflict of interest. Since I'm the director, but I, I obviously like <laughs> I, I like a lot the, the the last version. But you should check out the other one as well. Um, go go go! You made a tantrum, man. Uh, yes, of <laughs> course I did. Uh, what kind of director with a what, what kind of director would I be if I didn't throw a tantrum, man? <laughs> but, and, and we have and we have to thanks to your lovable family man uh who were so kind to help us uh, i remember your dad helping us with um we are with all the stuff uh working uh from the beginning of the <coughs> of, of the day with the, with the, the props of the day of the shoot it was it was a good day it was stressful just for you, man. I was having a, a great day. Yeah, uh, I I was stressed out, but in the end, I'm used to it. I'm used to uh, be uh, all, all stressed up when when I'm having fun. <laughs> that, that perhaps that's filmmaking. Perhaps yeah, yeah. Perhaps that's the way. Just the way I am. And in the end, I actually, um, it's uh, it, it was um, it was an exercise of, of bonding for the for for the whole band and and, and even my uh, as as Bastardo says, uh, even my family were was involved in the making of this video. Um, we actually recorded it at the at my dad's dental clinic. Um, and the 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 operating room where we took the shots of the necropsy, it's an actual uh, former operating room, so it it adds up more authenticity to to the screenplay. And also, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to make it in a in a necropsy lab, but in the end, the the owner of the of the funeral house. Uh, had some issues uh, working it out with his old lady, and we we just had to work with with, with the resources we had at hand. But I well, hope it's very uh, familiar experience for me, and I'm gonna check out your guys' uh, video, and I'm sure that you know your music married with the visual concept. It's gonna be very intriguing to say the least. I, actually, the 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 work that uh, the the makeup work Bastardo did, it's uh, I'd say it deserves to be to be in a cult film. Uh, the um, well, I mean, it's a shame it's only uh, barely two minutes with the whole intro and stuff. But uh, the, the 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 work was was um, was exquisite. I. I really, really admire uh, Bastardo's work when it comes to uh, editing, uh, when it comes to um, to prop making with um, with all, all of the stuff he did for the video. And, I, uh, and outside the, uh, our productions, he, he's always been a huge inspiration to me. Uh, and, and I'm not saying this because he's here, you know? <laughs> I, I just feel... <laughs> I say that all the time. Uh, <laughs> well, me too, man. You know, it's a loving time. 
Yeah. Well, along those lines, though, you said it's two minutes or whatever. But um, you know, uh, short films are popular today. You could probably I've seen uh, music videos play at festivals. It could be something you could submit to a festival. Well, I hope we we get to submit it someday. Um, but I we we haven't really gotten to it. Uh, that that's actually a great idea. I yeah. will not. I feel bad for for watching it without the audio, but I pulled it up and I've been watching it on the side as you've been talking, and it's really cool. Yes, really thank you very you much. Guys step out of the way after you've done the interview, now I'm getting more curious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Necro Neil is I'm into this necrophilia video. So, yeah. That's cool. I love, I well, love anything it. that's kind of like taboo is mm -hmm. like it makes you kind of curious because it's not something that usually comes up too often. So that you get kind of the that kind of look. Well, you can use like, you can use any of the songs that we are, we have, man. We can use any song that we have. On your films. Oh yeah, no. It would, it would be an honor to have your music. You know, you guys have. I mean, the song you played over the break. You know, it was really good. And you know, yeah, I think you know this interview was you know maybe fortuitous. And I hope we get to work together. And I will try to find a way to work you guys' music into the soundtrack. If you get to know each other. Oh yeah. No, and it's yeah. a but, you know, with the soundtrack and everything that's always something I'm looking for is building these kinds of, you know, relationships. Because it's like that's something a lot of people don't think about when they're watching movies, but the music is a huge part yeah. of it. And I've seen some movies where it's like a feature length music video, and I want movies to kind of feel like that where the music and the sound design is very tied into the you know to the overall thing so i think your music would be like perfect for any scene where it's at this kind of creepy or sinister bar and the and the characters and then you hear this is like this sounds kind of a little like elvis but creepier and i think that's a really great vibe well, if our music uh, makes you to think in something, great. Uh, oh, our, work yeah. is, our work is done. Oh, yeah. And Elvis, but creepier is like a great, you know, compliment for me. Like, yeah. I give kind of strange <laughs> compliments, but that's, yeah. but that's really like, you know, for me, that's like, treat me like a fool. <laughs> treat me like a fool. Uh, uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> over you, <laughs> uh, Dave Deadman wants to know if you guys are into the Matadors, a great Canadian horror Billy band from London, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, yeah they, they sound great. They, they sound smoothy. Uh, smoother than than our music, but very inspiring, and they are one of the best uh, uh, singers well, in the psychobilly. I love <laughs> <laughs> broke your heart a thousand times. Yeah, the, I like I like by the Matadors. It's uh, it's a, such a fine tune. The the guitar is uh, it's. Uh, it's just uh, exquisite. I, they're, they're yeah yeah they're 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 more of a smoother psychobilly, but they're 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 a great band. I I, I actually love the the singer's voice. I, I wish I could sing like that, but I can't. <laughs> well, what you just said was pretty nice. Yeah, 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 yeah I guess. I was, I was kind of faking my <laughs> voice. <laughs> Keep but... faking it. And, fake uh, it till I make it, man. Make it. <laughs> yeah, fake it till you make it. Uh, where can people uh, find your music? I'm sure that we can just put in uh, Atomic Psychos and you're going to find it. But you yeah. guys also, I saw a cool yeah. shirt on your uh, Facebook page and stuff. Uh, can people get merchandise? 
Yes, yeah, um, our page on Facebook, on Spotify, on Amazon, on Instagram, TikTok, Lepus, you know any other page? Basically, just put in Atomic Psychos and uh, where, wherever you like to, wherever you like to, uh, whatever social media page you like, you're gonna find you. Yeah, it's gonna pop up. If, if you look for oh, us on Spotify, it's gonna pop up. I will definitely go to Atomic and... Psychos if that tab open. Yeah, we we just we we use every every social media platform since uh, it's easier to get to to new audiences with that. Than rather than uh, paying for advertising, I, I think it's it's actually uh, a, a bit more authentic as well. So yeah. yeah, like I said, I found you in this the horror punk Facebook page, and just some person there said this band is great. Uh, yeah, um, we are. <laughs> actually, uh, great. We're actually great. We're actually very thankful for networks. you finding us. You know. Yeah. It's, oh, it's. I hear, you're talented. I looked you over a little bit. I don't know how yeah, I didn't come across great. the video, but I'm happy that I've seen it. I mean, heard it and seen it, but it really was super cool. I'm glad you brought it up. Do you, speaking of the video, do you guys have your own aspirations for doing film? Um, I, um, I don't know myself. Um, Actually, yeah, you gotta think long and hard before you get into this. It's <laughs> it's more yeah. than what you're expecting making a feature film. Yeah, I, I th that's what that's kind of what what I was thinking about. I I like uh, I really really enjoyed uh, making a music video, but uh, perhaps uh, when it comes to filmmaking, at least uh, at least myself, I I'm. I would really stay on the on the music video uh, line of work when it comes to filmmaking. But I, I really did enjoy um, making a music video and um, and watching it when and on watching the final result is it's um, it's kind of impressive to see the the thought you had for for the for the music video the, the your original idea. Uh, Coming to life, uh, it's actually um, it's one of the best experiences I've had, but it's also uh, it was also one of the most stressful experience <laughs> as well. But uh, as long as it's music videos, yeah, why not? Uh, I'm all I'm all about uh, filmmaking. <laughs> well, is uh, for me. He... It was a dream from all my life. Uh, I I love cinema from from the beginning of my life. I I I, I developed something in myself, the, a dream that I would like when I grow up to direct, to write. Uh, but. Um, uh, all that, all that stressful thing that my friends say, uh, it, it's real, but more more than that, it's the money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I love all the parts uh, that I, I've been involved. Uh, I've been working in short films a lot, uh, doing makeup, uh, doing gory uh, gory scenes effects uh, splatter things okay. um, drops uh, i've been doing everything uh, on cinema i've been doing editing i love all, all of that parts because uh, it makes me gain <coughs> money without investing uh, now that we have all the AI features, I know it's it's not the same. I know, yeah. uh, but uh, it's cheaper. Uh, you can um, make uh, an idea comes to life with less money than before. Uh, you you have or you have to <laughs> well just. Let's not just talk about money. 
uh, because that to greed that's too greedy but involved with another person uh, oh, yeah. that is that is not so easy to mm -hmm. uh, to to get on the schedule very punctual everybody have to be punctual uh, have, have to be on on time but it's good i, I love to wake up at the 3 a.m to to go for a, a shooting i i love it but if you are doing it with friends that are not um, uh, very into it or you don't have to uh, the leadership to to make them uh, afraid of you or uh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's it's difficult i'm now um um playing with with all these uh, features uh, ai and animation and video uh that i would like to to present our new videos mm -hmm. that's because that's because i don't have money and i don't have a lot of friends uh, in the monster mind video uh the song that um that we just released the new uh, the newest album the the newest video sorry was created first the music by pedro rodriguez and the lyrics uh, written by me i was expecting to tell a story about someone living in a mythological world mm -hmm. with all those monsters uh, from my bestiary you know gnomes griffins imps witches a bugbeer and a siren with a smelly background uh and i i couldn't have all the all the money to make all those special things so i i needed to to do it uh, <laughs> other way and i did it like like that uh, if you could uh, watch the the video you you could tell it's not the same but but and now I, i'm uh, well now that we are <laughs> talking about that i'm uh, i'm planning on uh, on getting uh, our new single uh, dedicated to the longtime enemy of doctor who the song name is dalek's attack oh cool <laughs> you like it yeah, I can I can picture like right. the like the pepper shakers like. Well, my fingers are proud <laughs> to be one on the top ten chart of Gallifrey. What? <laughs> the planet already exploded. <laughs> what did you not tell me? Well, at least I'll be glad if psychobillies or people who likes music around the globe just uh, listen to it and watch uh my new video mm -hmm. that's that i'm working on the editing uh the dallas attack official video and let me tell you something it's gonna be huge oh yeah i like that vocal effect you oh. <laughs> that is cool so expected that um, uh, so yeah. i think you brought up a really good point though and i think a lot of times it's it's really easy to trash talk about AI and talk about practical effects. And of course we love practical effects and it takes money to do practical effects. It takes manpower to do practical effects. And that's real. Um, there's so much that goes into that. We we have you know friends out there that are doing practical effects and you can see what their process is to just make like a, one creature is such a process and you make a mistake and then you've got to scrap something and it's yeah so i can really respect you you talking about it i think it's a really important point to make that not everybody understands like the full picture of what it takes to be a creator yeah the the, the talking about ai uh, in the in art making it, mm -hmm. it actually um, i think it's um it's a great tool to to actually um <coughs> To actually uh, materialize what you are seeing in your 
in your mind because perhaps the um, w when you're working with other people it, it, you don't always get to um get to um, take them to do what uh, or, or to have the, the the same shared vision of what you want to create but if you if you do have um if you do have a good prompt for ai uh, creating you can you can uh, virtually um you can virtually make whatever you want the, the any way you want it and starting from that point you can either uh, work it completely with ai or using ai as a tool for sketching and getting the other uh, your co-workers to to make whatever you want them to make um with with, with a, a more elaborate uh sketch you know mm. Yeah, I can see that. Like, I do. I draw, and I know the idea of if I had to draw my ideas to the point where people could understand what I'm trying to show, and then to have them crit, like say, "Well, what about this?" Then that's a whole other big process that takes time. Yeah, the hardest thing is actually trying to express your ideas. That's that's been a struggle for me for a while <laughs> yeah it takes yeah. time you know you you have to uh to make a, ske a sketch uh with no money and you have to show them to to your crew uh what if it's not what they want. Uh, you already spent, uh, I don't know, money or weeks uh, in labor of that. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. As someone oh, who yeah. draws, and I used to, uh, I'm not a tattoo artist now, but I was an apprentice tattoo artist, and I got into that because I could draw really well. And it was great to be able to have people come in the shop and be like, well, I'm going to get this flash art and be like, no, 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 come with me and let's talk and create something. But it does take time. And sometimes you can come up with something that you think is going to really be what the person wants. But And that process can be fun, but that was part of that oh, yeah. job. I was getting paid to do that. But if you're just like, trying to come up with stuff no one's feeding you this money to just like come up with ideas for your own thing like you're not paying yourself for that time whereas in that that environment someone was paying me to be a part of this creative process and money is a real thing you know you mentioned money but money is a real thing and i don't know if people always understand that like the idea of making things like i would love to make things i joke with neil like if i had money then La, 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 and we would do the things and go and <laughs> just even the idea of like being able to travel to like somewhere on a weekday is not doable for me like I can't travel somewhere on a weekday just that one thing um so I definitely can appreciate what you're talking I think this is a really good conversation to have yeah about AI because it is yeah. such a divisive thing and trying to figure out like where AI is a good and where is it bad and what makes it problematic. I know a lot of artists because AI will like suck the juice out of other artists create creations without even asking and just like absorb that person's art and then just <coughs> it out there. And I know that there are artists that have a problem with that and I get that. So I think there's just, just so, yes. <laughs> we haven't already do that. Uh, all, all our minds, all our creations are inspired by others. I do agree with that too. Yeah, yeah, and, and also, um, I, I can't really uh, think of something which uh, artists hasn't been um, ha hadn't had an issue with. So we, we we're 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 that way. Artists disagree always. Uh, artists disagree with everything, and it happened with when when they they first created electric guitar. Uh, where it happened when they uh, when they switched to from tube amps to uh, solid state amps. 
when we switch uh, from solid state amps to simulated amps, I mean that's that's just the way the the artists are. Artists uh, are artists because they disagree, and it's going it's always going to be that way. Uh, it's just that now we have another tool for uh, saving money and and doing things faster, and that way we can get uh, we can get our art uh, farther than we have ever imagined. That's the great thing about AI. Uh, I, what I think what would be great is if they could, if you could use AI and then it would give you because we don't know who's making that art, right? So like we can sit here and talk about these are the movies that inspired us. These are the creatives and we're talking about musicians that inspire us, but we can't do that with AI. Be like, wow, we got this amazing thing from this person. I think that maybe that could make a difference if we were able to give that credit. What do you yeah, think? perhaps uh, the, 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 the people who's behind uh, AI's they they could um they could uh, figure out a way to give credit to artists that inspired such art mm -hmm. that 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 actually could help a lot to uh, when it comes to um, the acceptance of of ai or uh, in 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 the amongst artists you know yeah I think... go ahead so uh, it is working like that uh, well uh, there are plans to be, I, I'm so into the AI because I'm a <laughs> composer. <laughs> uh, well, there are um, people in the AI who think the same way. Uh, give credits to the artist and give some money uh, to them. And, and it will be like that. Uh, it, it is. It is not everything on AI. The all, all the stuff in the world is not on it. So mm -hmm. if you want to be part of it, you will you will be there. You will be trying like now, like on YouTube, like um, on Spotify. If you want to be there, if you have something to give, you do it and all the algorithms will work to make you some money there's I hoping we need yeah. some money making algorithms for us that would be very that would be very wonderful and i know if i heard something <laughs> soft, if there was like a video i watched and there was some cool effect thing and there was some kind of like this was inspired by that i might actually want to seek out like that's really cool and now i want to know more about that so it might actually be a way to find more artists that i would have never seen ai jump on it we're making it happen here on without your yeah <laughs> it's there to stay whether we like it or not and if i had ever if i ever have to take a test again you know yeah i'll, I'll use a chat gpt essay why not yeah i guess i just admitted to that too quickly i don't know <laughs> yeah, it's, really happening so fast. it's never too quickly. It's never too late. So you, so you guys mentioned, you know, some music videos and stuff. What are you guys working on currently? We uh, are. I'm on the Dallas Attack. Um, uh, sorry, Lopez. Uh, oh, I'm on the Dallas Attack video, and we are planning to get into the studio to record a new, our newest song name. Más negro que la noche, or blacker than the night, inspiring the 70s Mexican horror flick directed by Carlos Enrique Tabuada Walker. We also have another song named Veneno para Hadas, or Fairy Poison in English, inspired by another film directed by him. Yeah, we're trying to uh, we're trying to reach out to our uh, local audiences. Uh, we. We are. Um, we have new songs coming. We have new videos coming. Uh, I hope uh, we. I hope we we can figure out <laughs> on how to uh, release and well at least when it comes to me I I want to uh, release our EP in vinyl 
we, we haven't really talked uh, about this uh, the, the way we should, but um, I hope we soon can get to it. Yeah. It's very coachable. Guys, um, I'm, I'm having an issue. Uh, actually, I yeah. should have been off to work. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, no, about, it's been great as, to as, well, as, I didn't expect we'll wrap us up to work. I, I should have left hours, uh, but half an hour you know, we'll find oh, out. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yeah, no. Yeah, we, this has been uh, great talking with you guys. We love the music. Thank you for being music of the month. No, thank and you. And anytime so much. you got new videos come out or, or new music, send it our way and we'll uh we'll put it up on the website. No yeah. life that need you. I, I I had a great time tonight. I I yeah, I was, yeah, it's, it's gonna it's video. gonna worth the it's gonna worth it. Uh, the the nagging I'm gonna get from my boss. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Hopefully, it's just some nagging and you're not you know let go or anything. No, no, no. It's now okay. I'm, I'm like assessing amounts of blood on the floor and. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 the fun part of the job. <laughs> you ever you ever you don't like like weird souvenir stuff, do you? Uh, uh, one, one, the, the, there was this one time where, where they had this um, they had this amputee but I, I really did I in the last minute I didn't took anything because uh, first first off uh, for legal this reasons this is a joke <laughs> but uh, I didn't I didn't actually <laughs> took any, yeah I, I was I was gonna take um, uh <coughs> A, a souvenir from an amputee scene, but uh, it was uh, uh, in in the last minute. I I didn't get to it. It, it was uh, it, I, it was a bad idea. <laughs> it was such a bad idea, and, and a bad idea because it was illegal. Yeah, <laughs> a bad idea <laughs> for, for legal reasons. This is a joke. <laughs> and um, also, uh, I've. Um, I found a I found a bullet outside my house <laughs> once, oh, wow. so uh, it, n not a. Um, uh, I think it it might have gotten into into my clothes or something, but oh. I I still have it today. <laughs> it, it, was oh, wow. a, it, it was a it was a it was a it was a shot round actually. Wow! Wow! wow. Just went into your pocket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be there, and you, yeah, and you're just here, the clink clink. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll let you get to work. Good to talk yeah, to you, Doctor. Good to talk to you, Albert. I had, a, I you had such a great time, great guys. Great day of work. Thank great night of so, work. Thank you so very much for for letting for for having us tonight. Oh, thank you. And yeah. I leave yeah, you with uh, Bastardo. Go. Thank you Can so you much. It's, it's been a great it's been a great time. Bye bye. 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 It was Bye. great dating you. Know. Yeah. All right. We'll let you both go, El Bastardo. It's good to talk to you as well. Wonderful. Well, it was great uh, dating you, El Bastardo. That is a great name. And Dr. Yeah. Lee, it's, it's, it's a great name because he already left the uh, studio. <laughs> well, and thank that, you, El Bastardo, you can check out Richard's movie. Oh, well, yeah. I, I will. Well, at your your album too. I'm gonna to check out all your videos and everything. I you like know. this. It's very cool. I love. Yeah, no, I, I, that's the thing about being guests together is that it's like we have this bond from doing this recording on without your head on the same night. So it's like, yeah, it's rock and roll. I love I'm it. a I'm a collector. I uh, I need them all. I need all the movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I will be on your movie. Oh, thank you so much. Awesome. awesome. Fantastic. Right. We'll see you right. soon. Don't forget Anastasia. Have a great night. Yeah. Have a great yeah. night. You too. Have a uh, pleasure night. I have a very, very, very good invitation with this. Uh, it was a pleasure oh, being yeah. here. And a pleasure that you invited us, that you consider us as a band. We hope to return, and we, uh, who knows? Maybe see you there, or be on a movie. Of hey, why not? 
I love it. That would be um, so much fun. Fantastic. All right. All right. Well, well, all right. You have a fantastic well, night. You have a fantastic night. Hi, this is Doug Paddy, Pinhead from the Hellraiser movies, and you are listening to Without Your Head. And you better keep listening to Without Your Head, or you will not only be without your head, you will be without your soul, because I will tear it apart. And, um, of its genre, its number one is a good one. Uh, the other ones, I don't know who the guy in the hockey mask is. <laughs> I say I'm crazy, but I'm not insane. I would never have, uh, you know, killed those kids if my little boy went at the bottom of Crystal Lake. So I do not admit to that fellow being anything in my life. Were you surprised when they made, like, a sequel to it and, you know, they used uh, Jason Voorhees in them? Since, you know, in the original one, he's supposed to be dead. Well, I just told you I don't accept those movies. Okay. I just don't admit to them. No. And, you know, the, the second one was made by our assistant uh, producer, I think it was. And uh, I had to go and do another head for him to be in a refrigerator, which is pretty ghastly looking. In fact, I have a picture of it that I have at the um, convention, you know, for the autographs. And, oh, it's, it's very bad looking with my mouth open, you know, and blood coming out. But there's a bottle of milk right next to me and a loaf of bread on the other side of my head. And so I say to the people when they want one, I said, shall I write, you know, oh, my God, this milk has gone sour. Because that's what it looks like. Right. I'm afraid, no, you're but the rest them. of them, no, I haven't. And I haven't done any of the other ones. Uh, I've been asked to do about three of them, and I won't do them. No, these, you know, this one's fine. This is an all right one. And I like what I do, and I'm only in the last ten minutes, but... I have the chance of being an actress, and you know, and really portraying a character. And by the way, you never see me kill anybody in that movie. Right. I'm the one who loses their head. Right. I, was I wasn't. I wasn't even there doing it. It was done by a, a guy. So, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a shot of a hand with hair on the back of it. I do not have hair on the back <laughs> of my hands. Do you think that's scarier, like a a real person, like someone looks like a real person as a killer? instead of, like, the sequels where it's kind of like a maniac? I'm telling you, I don't accept those. <laughs> there are, there are another movie <laughs> and I'm going to stick to my gun. See, I can't really comment on um, right. to tell you the truth, because I haven't seen them. And uh, I know the guy that was uh, Steve that was in number one. Now, I didn't even know, I mean, in the one that when Jason started to come upon the scene, that Jason. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he had first worked with a canvas bag over his head or a paper sack or something. Mm-hmm. And then he told me when they were going to have him, because he was doing all his own uh, stuff, you know. Uh, there was nobody there to to do it for him. He He's a good-looking man, and he said, I wasn't going to go through that window and have my face all cut up. <laughs> so he said he's the one that came up with the idea to work. Hi, this is Adrienne Barbeau. Just call me Billy. Everyone does. And you're listening to withoutyourhead.com. Oh, hey, guys. Hey. No, that was a very uh, interesting interview with uh, Betsy Palmer. She was like, oh, I haven't really seen the uh, Yeah, yeah. So that's a clip. I thought uh, I'll have some clips ready throughout uh, in the future weeks. It's just a little clip from uh, from one of our first interviews from 2006 oh, cool. with Betsy Palmer, one of our very first cool. guests on the show. Actually, it was one of the first guests set up on the show, and I think it was, it was still uh, one of our first guests, but... A little trivia for the show. The first two guests that that confirmed to be on the show, uh, Sid Haig and Betsy Palmer, and they uh, came on from the very first Rocket Shot. Nice. Amazing. 
Yeah. So you guys have been doing this for a long time and, you know, it's really great to have that kind of, you know, you know, sticking to something for so long and, and everything, you know, I think that's, I think that's an underrated quality in general. Not a lot of people make long-term commitments. That's why America is a high divorce rate. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's an interesting point. I think, uh, oh, thank you. yeah, it's a really interesting point, but, um, Neil's been doing the show forever. I came in probably 2011 or 2012. Oh, it's still pretty long. I mean, yeah, yeah, I had like a wee break, but I'm back. And yeah, I mean, I'm glad that you came yeah. back. I actually tried to stay away and I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, that is not for this idiot. I tried to stay. Well, because, you know, because I so much, I love it so much that it it dwarfs the rest of my life. Like before the break, I had like wicked crappy jobs for the show. Like I had to get this job, third shift, that it's only three days a week, 12 hours a day, so I can do without your head. So <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore, but I am still making time in my life because I do love it. That's so, good. Yes. I, I'm very happy to have you back on the show. I'm happy to be here, but we get to meet lovely people like all of you. This oh, is a wonderful you. experience to be able to to be have the exposure to wonderful, creative people and the things that you create and be able to talk about that. It's just an absolute pleasure, and I I love oh, it. Thank you Wouldn't so be much. Here. He ain't paying me. <laughs> I love it, and he isn't paying himself either. Like we were just no. talking about, you're not yeah. paying yourself to be there. Oh no, yeah, you're there because we love it. No, it's it's a passion project, and when you're doing a passion project, you don't always do it for the money or the expectation of future money. Mm -hmm. And I think I was saying something like that earlier too. I would be doing it anyway, but if I never make yeah. any significant profit from it, I would still keep doing it with any means that I could. Mm -hmm. so yeah so we got some uh some news here uh we do want to mention that uh we're we have a connection now with arrow video which is very exciting very cool. yeah so richard uh, are you cool staying do you need like a break do you, you want to go i don't know if neil checked in with you or not you're here and we love you oh yeah yeah and <laughs> also want to like i didn't i i was like neil how yeah you could stay so yeah you, you, you could take off you could stay show. <laughs> Until we're done. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm curious about the uh, news. You can uh, you can tell me. All right. Here, Neil. What do you got? Did you put it in the doc? Or are you going to surprise uh, Yeah, I have it in the in the. We have a doc file where we keep the news here. So. Yes. So I have wow. all kinds of files that. So I put up a thing which I, I didn't know if I'd get a lot of replies. I asked the the people in the community. If they had, you know, uh, trailers and stuff, they would like us to talk about. And oh, I, was, I, even, that I had a bazillion replies, so I don't really? think we're going to get to all of them tonight. Wow. But I'm going to save these for the future. And uh, I want to thank everybody. And then a lot of people wow. are asking to come on, which is very cool. And I felt really <laughs> bad. It's just there's a limited amount of people we could actually have on the show. But yeah. we will definitely get to all your trailers at some point, but probably not all of them tonight. But we're going to get to the ones we can terrors my goodness so what have you what have you got to offer us all right so yeah we we'll got some trailers here from different folks from around uh, i do want to mention real quick too uh severed limbs is coming up that is our short film festival this will be number 15 that's coming up in january oh cool and uh the shirt is out it is available and um, I've uh, actually already uh, accepted a few. So, I um no pressure because you're live right <laughs> now. But would you care to share a short for the shorts? Yeah, also? very. Yeah, you want me to? Yeah, I could totally That'd submit awesome. something That'd in there. Awesome. I have a bunch of little uh, videos. If submissions are still open, I'm always cool. yeah, I'm always yeah. interested. Yeah, it's free to submit uh, and free Very to watch. Cool. Like oh, yeah, free. it's yeah, free. It's, it's a virtual <laughs> festival. That's so it, We have a live chat room. <laughs> it's, it, it's usually really busy. Last one was really busy. 
And um, so it's, uh, you know, the audience is there, filmmakers there. Oh, we watch great. a bunch of shorts and we have some fun awards. It's a good night. Very cool. Yeah, I would be down for that. And that might be a good way to meet you guys in person. Yeah, well, oh, it's, virtual, it's, it's a yeah. virtual one. Yeah, it's a yeah. virtual one. Oh, no, it's I... virtual. Well, yeah. it's another it's yeah. a good way to have a second virtual yeah, yeah, of course, exactly. There and go. there's like a lot of background. <laughs> like Neil was saying, there's a lot of the people that make the shorts stay. Like if you could see the chat off to the side at all, I don't know if you see it, but there'll be people chatting. Like uh, it says, just not uh, play this clip for a break. That's what I see in the chat. Oh yeah, the, if you go to comments up on the top. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. now I. Whoa, yeah, now there's a big, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now see, there's many comments. And during, so during, and this is for the audience too, if you come to one of these events, then just like oh, you're, cool. you know, you can see whatever's being played and then to the side, there's ongoing chat. So you can pay attention if you want. You can actually make the chat go away. So it's just cool. dropping, you can just focus on the film. But then in the chat, there's filmmakers, there's fans, there's all kinds of people interacting. And That's it's really be nice. Yeah. Much like just I would now, definitely you know, be down for being part yeah. of that. And I'll choose which of the videos I've created that I to yeah, uh, be awesome. Submit and Love it. yeah, that would be great. So awesome. thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Just so perfect. let me grab one of these. We actually um have a trailer here from our good friend uh, Lawrence Harvey's in a new movie. Oh Artifacts of oh, cool. Fear. And uh um so we were sent two different trailers. One's uh one is the one uh, the director himself made, and the other one he said is a more spiffy one made by the uh, uh, the production company. I kind of like the one that he made himself, Rusty Apper. So you want to check this out? No. Yes. <laughs> Let me grab it here. I'm gonna grab the link. And I thought it'd be fun if we watch. I, I, I I'm just gonna show the ones I got uh, permission to show. That's wise. Yes. Yes. Um, for that, I asked everybody, not everyone, get back to me. So, we're going to show the ones yep. tonight that we have permissions to show. Give me one sec while I get this uh, ready. It's, uh, or, uh, yeah, it's very uh, professional here. All right, here we go. <laughs> it's technology. <laughs> Is that even working? Can you see? No. I can't see anything. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. All right. Artifacts Here we of fear. Insert a coin and seal your doom. <coughs> <coughs> Some tales are told, <coughs> then soon forgotten. But legends, legends last forever. You have to understand that these are not stories, it's all real. These things people experience, the nightmares, the sleepwalking, the waking up at exactly 3.33 every morning. See, the hour itself is known as the devil's hour, and that number, 333, that's one half of the answer, that's symbolic. The answer is 666. <laughs> From the mind of Rusty Apper comes a terrifying new vision. Three tales to blacken your soul. or someone else no um uh, rusty the director uh on facebook uh mm -hmm. sent it to me and he was at uh nice. that'd be cool we'll try to uh he would like to come on and talk about it and maybe some of the cast we will figure that out that but it looks very cool and we're very happy that uh that our old buddy lawrence harvey is in it yes definitely 
Oh, uh, yeah. No, I recognize <laughs> Tim. He looks very uh, unforgettable. Kind yeah. Of look. Absolutely. Very, uh, yes. very charismatic. A uh, very nice guy, too, if you ever get a chance to meet him. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm sure we'll cross paths at one of these uh, festivals or conventions. Hopefully. Eventually. I think everybody in this eventually. kind of world is a meeting eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the next one we have here is Humbug, and this is from uh, my friend John uh, Renna, yeah. who I met uh, at oh, Buffalo God. Dreams Fantastic Film Festival. Nice. Oh. Special report. Chaos in the streets. Panic. The police don't know what to do. There is crime everywhere. But now there's crime in our own That's city. Baker Street. Unfortunately, I this story it. falls extremely close to home. Chaos of this intense investigation has been hard to miss as the killer has been striking at random. For many, it'll never be the same again. Children used to play in these streets, but now these very streets run red with innocent blood. The youngest victim, Billy Reeves, was last seen Billy. in the vicinity of... enough news for one day <coughs> that was humbug john renna i also saw adrian esposito in there and some other uh people i know from yeah, buffalo I Green I yeah so i think that's all the ones that we had uh that i got uh permission back from but uh, some cool. That's stuff. always good, and that's another filmmaking lesson I've learned: is always make sure you get the contract side to get the legal liability issues mm -hmm. squared yeah. away. That will end up causing you more work later right. on than you can imagine. In fact, that is not something I thought about at all when I got into filmmaking. Now it's like, no, I'm I'm definitely I am not what? taking any chances that could uh. Not gonna, not gonna skirt around on the edges. <laughs> how, did you, how did you learn this lesson? Well, there were some uh, for most of the most of the cast and crew on Fag. We had contracts signed, you know, when we were working on it, and then there were a few people later that we found out we didn't have signed contracts from. So thankfully, it's not, you know. Nothing bad happened. I'm just, you know, contacting yeah. people, getting them to sign retroactive contracts and everything. So it's I guess not too scandalous but, from a legal perspective. But, yeah, this whole filmmaking thing is a lot of like very every little a lot of little things yeah. you don't think of until they come up. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, when we were doing uh, the Once in Future Smash, it was very hectic to try to get everyone to sign uh, a waiver because we filmed oh, in yeah. the actual, you know, convention. And, and I think uh, we did sign contracts for everyone at FAG. We just couldn't find some of the 
contracts. That's why later it was like, oh, yeah, you know, we have to have a side contract for you. I'm sorry for making you do this again because I am disorganized. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad it's not just me. It's it's comforting that this was a thing for the once in future Smash too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. It just sounds like a lot of work, that which our guests were just talking about how much work. No, I mean, I get Dr. Lepus's uh, point about, you know, about like, and I think it is more sane not to pursue this. But, you know, I've never said that I was completely sane, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That was kind of a laugh slash cough. <laughs> I liked it though. I thought it no, was thank you. Um. <laughs> so uh, I do want to show this to uh, uh, this was on our Facebook page, which you can join to facebook.com slash group slash with that head horror. I want to be and... part of this club Whoa. that would have me as a member. Oh, wow. wow that looks, that looks cool. That does look cool. I, I'm yeah. scared of sharks, but that's just like non-shark enough. That's yeah, very, more he's of a biker like shark. Very, his shirt hangs in a way that emphasizes his boob. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's <pretty> he's strange. <laughs> <laughs> so this is um from um a uh, member um uh Matt Peters and uh he has an indie uh, go go, I think, or, or oh, GoFundMe cool. for his uh, film he's trying to get made. And let me grab the name of it Shark Gang. Shark Gang. That's what I was thinking of when I saw that. Graveyard Shark. Picture. It looks like a gangster shark. Right? He's yeah. like, a, like a biker gang kind of shark. What oh, is it yeah. called? Graveyard Shark. Graveyard Shark. I'm confused. I have a lot of questions about this now. Yeah, how did it get and in a graveyard? I guess it's an underwater whoops. graveyard. Oh, uh, oh my cool. god, what? All right, I'm sold. I'm I'm in. That is pretty cool. I like the <laughs> neon, uh Yeah, the color is very cool. Whatever its skin is. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Oh yeah. It's like a, almost like, like the guy from It's a Trap from from Return of the Jedi. Yes, I oh, was yeah. thinking that. I'm like, this reminds me of Star Wars for some it's reason. A trap. Yeah, I could say that kind of uh, vibe. Yeah. Col uh, was like, who was he? Admiral Calamari? Yeah. Mon Calamari? Yeah. Something like that. That's cool. <laughs> okay, now he's scary again. He's in the water. Uh, <laughs> I have a terrible, Richard, I have a terrible phobia of sharks. Uh, oh, so he is in a graveyard I there. When I was in Florida, like in the wild. Oh, really? Yeah, it wasn't like a big one. It was like, it looked kind of sick. It was swimming close to oh. the mm. shore. And the other people were at the beach. Like, they didn't seem to notice it. But I did. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why did Florida. it look sick? It was, if it's near the shore, it just wants to eat. Yeah, I mean, it How didn't ever It's great your but I looked toes. in the water, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a shark. My God. How big do you think it was? Like, like about, uh, like, like <gasps> that kind it's of. Too big. <laughs> it's a big fish. <laughs> too, too much for me. <laughs> oh, I see <laughs> Dave, uh, dead man, just uh, texted the shark next to the graveyard emoji. Nice. That's cool. I have the comments tab open now. <laughs> hey, why don't I have that comment? I have like two blocks. I have a black. Yeah, bar. I can't see it either. I think I have oh. to be on YouTube to see it. Oh, maybe that's it. Well, right. uh, Thanksgiving opens this weekend, which is uh, I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah. Had you have you seen anything about this Thanksgiving horror film, Richard? No, I haven't. I didn't hear too much about it and that's kind of the crazy thing about you know working for so long on fang is that i end up oh well <laughs> oh yeah 
I didn't know this is when we were doing this, Neil, but I think mine is on back. <laughs> I have a good so audience. Out. You're listening. You can see my very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> That's the screenshot right there. Yeah. I had it here. I was going to open the show with it, but uh, I wasn't sure if you were going to be here, and I didn't want to be the only uh, turkey. No, yeah, I'm here now. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm glad I oh, stayed at no. yeah. the turkey. Yeah, part. exactly. You know, this, was, this is, you know, yeah, this is the. Yes, this, this, is, this is tradition. Like this I think we, we wear these every year. Our, like yeah. business cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you really know what the show is all about. You know, you're now yeah, fully initiated, fully indoctrinated. We're <laughs> not classy in any way. Oh, this is it. No, that's, you know, that's... <laughs> Poor Richard. I'm he's a I mean, I would buy one of like, <laughs> like a really high level festival that I would buy one, but <laughs> I still more time to get some tuxedo money. <laughs> <laughs> we need a turkey tuxedo. Oh yeah, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> I have to not. I have a I have a headache and I'm very warm. I'm still uh, getting over my I'm cold. I, but I, have, I can have the so turkey. Right. Can be in my yeah, of course, and sit on your shoulder. Yeah, good, yeah, hopefully, you know, if we that. if we go see the movie this weekend, we'll wear them. That's that's good. You can uh, like the Rocky Horror screenings. You'll go in there with uh, yeah, exactly. Gear. exactly. Exactly. We'll have to keep down the legs in the theater, though. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm kind of glad that I didn't get a haircut today because I was thinking about getting a haircut today. Mm -hmm. But I think it makes things more dramatic when you can see. It does yeah. Because they just yeah. have like the big hair, and the, the little bouncer. Yeah. And the hair. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. that's true. You do have a good bounce in your hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. I see oh, a Founders you. Day is also playing. I, I I don't see it playing anywhere in Boston, but it's also a horror movie. I think it's set during uh, the same time period. There's a lot of holidays being um, taken advantage of. Yeah, exploited, I, I think you were going to say. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if there's any that hasn't. I guess yeah, the not, holidays there's very not like, a lot like, of Thanksgiving I it first, mm -hmm. but the holiday title is very uh, attention grabbing. Absolutely, and people, I think horror people are looking for it. To be honest, I think there's oh, a yeah. lot of fun uh, holiday movies, and it's kind of like I think when people <laughs> who don't like Christmas say, "Oh, I watched Die Hard. That's my Christmas movie." And yeah. I think in the same way, horror movie people kind of like their holiday horror movies. Like it would be like Black Christmas or Silent Night, Deadly Night or something like, or Krampus. Yeah, or I've got this is uh, oh, that's from the Crypt Patch on here. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you have a, a holiday horror that you enjoy? Hmm, that is an intriguing. Well, actually, my girlfriend and I, we uh, recorded an episode of our podcast about Halloween, John Carpenter's okay. Halloween, on Halloween. So that was mm -hmm. how we celebrated Halloween. We called it Halloween on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, as Dave oh, brings up, you. for people who don't know, Eli, the Thanksgiving originally was a fake trailer during uh the grindhouse uh double feature and you know it was always hinted he would make it and so he finally made the movie know. the original trailer is very grindhouse like a 70s gritty movie but uh this one looks more like an homage to a 90s slasher which is peculiar hmm. we'll find out i am i am intrigued yeah i like to see any kind of uh uh I go see about everything that comes out anyway, but it. I think I think the trailer does look good. Oh yeah, Gremlins is really good. Yeah. Holiday horror. I didn't think of that at first because I saw that when I was a kid, you know. And usually my mom would have not wanted me to be watching anything horror, but she was like, "Oh, it's you know, it's a Christmas." Movie and yeah, that, and, and it's uh, it's um, you know, not really kiddish. Yeah. It's it's more violent than what you you know. I think yeah. what you think, you know. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it though. It's one of my favorites. That's really cool. I need to excuse myself for some water. I'm having a cough. Uh, yeah, I think I'm. I've been uh, delaying uh, dinner. Oh, okay. So well, I have a little bit of dinner what? before that I'll have the main part after. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to get. So, oh, okay. So, my question is I don't want to go get water if you're going to go get dinner. And then me come back and you're gone. Uh, Are you going to get dinner? Like now? Because then I'll say goodbye to you now. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess we could yeah. say. Goodbye. Well, I didn't know what you meant by water. Like water can oh, be like lots of different kinds of uh, water. water or like no, legit or water. Alter alternative water. <laughs> no, like a legitimate water. <laughs> no alternative water. <laughs> not in, not in, where's not alternative watering at this moment. Just no alternative uh, water. That's uh, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll say goodbye to you guys. For tonight, um, it was really great meeting. Yeah, it meeting was awesome. Meeting, meeting I'm glad you stayed along. It was really wonderful to be on the show. I had a fantastic time, and I hope to be oh, back yeah. real soon. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You have a wonderful and night. You as well. Have a fantastic night. Yeah. yeah and you what's the name, of, the, what's the name of your podcast where people could check out yeah, your podcast? Yeah. They could check out oh, Halloween yeah. and Halloween. My podcast is the... Uh, citizen show actually i can try to uh i could try to write it in here on the uh chat oh, yeah, if yeah. that's uh, possible and in the first uh episode i talk about uh fangs so that mm -hmm. I, I, I listened to the first episode oh yeah you did mm -hmm. yeah it started out as an uh, audio only <laughs> podcast then we started uh, doing video casts on it. Well, it's actually probably easier if I uh, message it to you on Messenger, and then you can. Uh, yeah, I'll send it on here. I can't figure out how to join the chat with my uh, technical abilities. No worries. Seeing what they are. <laughs> yeah. It's like I can be the writer and director of Fang and still have a bunch of random technical problems when I try to do an interview with someone. <laughs> People. That's why I hear in the chat. Well, I'm going to go before I start like exploding and coughing. All right. Well, oh, yeah. we had a great time. Well, I'll, I'll, well, I'll be no. I, okay. I see. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I right. need a break. All so, right. all right. I hope to see you soon, Richard. Yeah, I'll see you guys real soon. It was yeah. great meeting both of both of you. Enjoy and your... It was a wonderful experience to be on the show. I think you know this is my longest podcast ever, and it was you know I think we we covered a lot of territory. This was you know this was pretty epic. Definitely. I'm so happy you enjoyed yeah. it. Really happy. Yeah, it was great. Okay. Enjoy your dinner. Night. Yeah, you as well. Oh, uh, bye. Bye. Oh. Oh, okay. All so right. I'm gonna you have um I'll play something like a, here quick. You've got like a review, perhaps? Is anybody no, we, we haven't had a new review from uh from Joe for, for weeks here. So oh wow. Well he must be a very busy man. Yeah. I know I do. he really enjoys doing them. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I don't have too much. I honestly don't have much uh, pulled up here at all. Um, I'm going to show the Halloween con costume contest, uh, the, the costumes, why your way when you come back will fade it out. All okay. Right. Which has a song from Atomic Cycles, yes. I believe. Yeah, it has three. Excellent. Clips of three. Right. I will be back. <laughs> Go through, do that on my night shift, walking up the martyr. 
Hey, thank Hi. you. Yeah, very cool. Very cool Halloween stuff. That was a good time. It was a very good time. I have to thank James Sato for me being on the show tonight, Neil. Ah. Because the reason I was actually late is because I came home from house sitting today to do the show. And I got here and I tried to turn on my computer. And as the screen lit up, it was like things had blown up like a thousand times. So it was super zoomed in on like random things. And I was like, I am fucked. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how to fix this. Any button I'd push on the keyboard, it would just go black. And you'd see it the correctly sized little mouse arrow. And I could move that with the mouse, but it wouldn't click a mouse, nothing. And James put a suggestion on my Facebook because I wrote on Facebook, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is not good. And uh, he gave me a suggestion and that suggestion did not work, but it led me into a Google search and I f- discovered what I needed to do. So thank you to James Sato yeah, for very good. James, my cool. experience on this show, which has been fantastic. I'm, I'm really happy that it worked out. Yeah, very good. Yeah, been a great show. I'm really glad Richard stayed uh, stayed around. It's yeah, very fun. Uh, he's a great guy. He's adorable. Yeah, yeah I, I I think uh, we'll, we'll we'll do some more stuff with him down the road here. Maybe yeah. maybe uh, uh, I think he'd probably be really fun on one of the uh, uh, top thirteen shows. Ooh, we'll cool. And I want to see. I just quickly while we were on the break, I was like, I got to see their their um. What their podcast, their uh, podcast looks like, and she looks adorable too. I want to, I want to watch them. They look very cute. Yes. So. Yeah, I I listened to the audio one, so I've not watched the video one yet. So. Oh, they look very happy. So, um, if you'd like, I'm. Uh, do you mind if I uh, tell everyone the are the early pick so far for severed limbs? There's not too many. <laughs> fine. Yes, it's fine. Go ahead. What? All right, the first bat. So we have Breadcrumbs by Richard Tanner, a twisting retelling of Hansel and Gretel through the eyes of a tired mm-hmm. father plagued by past mistakes. Interesting. I like the premise. That's interesting. I'm, I'm intrigued. Also by Richard, he has two. A similar theme, but a little different. The Big Bad, a twisting retelling of the three little pigs through the eyes of a woman hell-bent on revenge against those who did her harm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get I'll some trailers. I, I won't go to the trailers. Just, I mean, they're great, but uh, uh, let's see here. From Troy O.K., who uh, one of our regulars of, uh, of Severed Limbs, I'm a big fan. Mm-hmm. He did the Psycho short. The... Which one did he do? A psycho when he had the big eyes, he played the mom in the in the psycho short last yes. year. Yes. Yeah, that was excellent. I loved it. So he's got a the this is an older one, but uh again, the the very little rules here. They don't have to be uh I'm very we're very lenient on horror. They could be weird, underground, you know alternative but, culty. Something yeah. that could play it for cult. Right. Um they can be older, just as long as we've never played them before. I don't care. You know, they could be 20 years old. It could be a few years ago. And uh, uh, under 20. Long. Under yes, 20 minutes, please. Preferably even less, but yeah. uh, under 20 minutes. Please submit things that are less than 10 minutes. <laughs> Neil yeah. won't count you out, but I say 10 minutes or less. It's a short festival, people. Well, there's been some really good, like 12, 15 minutes and stuff. So I, I'm going to go yeah. with that. But uh, under 10, you're pr- right. well, honestly, if you submit some under 10 minutes, the odds of you getting in are pretty good. But under 20 minutes, anything over 20, I would rather not. Um, anything anyway. over 20. Annabelle says, nope. <laughs> there's another festival for you somewhere. Right. In eight here. <laughs> so uh, he sent in a 2020 Christmas story. Mm-hmm. And uh, all it says about it is as if 2020 wasn't bad enough already. 
That would be interesting because it throws back to uh, ye olden COVID times, which is such a strange thing to look. I know COVID still exists, but we all know it's very different than it was then. Right. So, so this is going to take place after Christmas, but we do have some Christmas themes, which I was excited about. He also sent in electric Nazi werewolf Santa from the moon. Oh, my God. And as soon as I saw that name, I was like, accepted. Wow. The Christmas Eve of Destruction. Mm. That's so, an amazing name. Very excited about that. The Witch's Necklace, which has a great um, poster. Folks out there. Did and that is, that? yeah, I'll grab it here. Is by uh, Juan Antonio Rotuno, another um, regular. Do you have postage for any of the other ones? Um, actually, some of those did not have Andy? posters. Okay, I wouldn't want to make you scour the internet in this moment. Yeah, they did not. They did not supply posters, but this one does. It, the posters in Spanish. Ooh, it looks oh, awesome. that's really cool. I don't know how well everybody can see it, but it's really. I like that. It's very yeah. creepy. He uh, sent last time he did El Taco, which won uh, most beloved character. Oh, that's someone with a boy, right? Yeah, that was great. Oh, that's exciting because that actually this one looks serious. Yes, the other yeah. one was very funny. And it's ten minutes and forty seconds, so just a little bit. That's over. fine. That's uh, fine. Lulu and Angelica go into an abandoned house to wander. It is said to be a haunted place. And between Lulu's jokes, they find an ancient necklace that could have serious consequences. Mm -hmm. That one sounds good. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll say the trailers, too. We also have uh, Beyond Terror trailer, which we actually did play on the show. That is by Andre V. So that's very uh, cool. Yes. And uh, one more trailer. And that is from Jacob Grimm. And it is The Dead of Night, which is a horror anthology, sh eight short stories. So it, uh, we won't be playing the feature film, but we will be playing the uh, the trailer for that. Cool. And it is also a very nice poster. Very good. Uh, Jacob, we actually Who's met. General uh, Productions. Who is this? Do you know who this is? In the chat. Yeah, I believe it's, yeah. I think it's, uh, I think that's actually uh, the uh, Rotuno who we were talking about a minute ago. Hmm? Who'd made El Taco and he made. Uh, oh, awesome. Grew up. <laughs> <laughs> I met him actually at a, at a convention, at a festival. And uh, Jacob Grimm, we, me and you met at Texas Frightmare. He made oh. a, um, he had a movie playing at the, um, at the festival during Frightmare. Oh, it was nice. a, also an anthology booth. Uh, the Dead of Night, really great poster. It's an excellent poster. It looks like a haunted house thing, perhaps. Yes. For Dr. Lippus. Yes, you'll be very excited. And I see we actually have, uh, I did not see these earlier. Well, I think they must have came in during when we're doing the show, probably. And Matthew Hunter, also a regular, he has sent in. Uh, Krampus to Toys of Evil. So we've got a Christmas theme going on here. But that'll be fun. Christmas will be a little over, and we'll talk about, we'll have some Christmas. Mm -hmm. And there will also be Fish Out of Water. Let me grab the, uh, that's, uh, um, if you guys watched uh, the Polaris interview last week, mm -hmm. Um, you saw the movie, right? I did, and it was really cool. Kirsten um, Cathew originally had made the short film, for, short film, and then she made the feature film Polaris, and mm -hmm. um, the short film is Fish Out of Water, and so uh, she uh, was all about us playing it at the. Oh, festival. that's great! I'm so curious about that. I want to wait until the actual festival to see it, though, for sure. It'll be good. It's on a Sunday, yeah, it's very I hope. Cool. I like it a lot. It yes, I planned it on a Sunday yeah. for you. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Fish out of water, an environmental horror about a woman 
who trawls for fish and catches more than she angles for. Interesting. It does have different cast members than the than the feature. It sounds like a different thing. So I'm really curious how these tie. Yeah, it's in. like kind of in the same world, but different. Am yeah. I frozen up on your end or just mine? You're not frozen. Hmm. You're totally fine on my end. No freezing right. of any kind. I think IMDb was playing a video and it froze me up uh, for me. Uh, all right. So there you go. And you guys can send those in. Um, this link's all over my Facebook, but just look up Severed Limbs on Film Freeway. It's free. It's fun. It's getting very uh, cold down uh, here in my basement. But... Tis that season. You're going to need your own space heater to flip your, your circuit. <clears throat> Your breakers. <clears throat> oh, wait. I have one right here. Aha! This, I don't have it plugged in. So I don't want anyone thinking it's dangerous me just picking up like that. But it's not plugged in at the moment. But it will be soon, maybe uh, next week. Mm -hmm. You going to put it on hold for now? Yeah, yeah. Did you know that Sleepaway Camp is turning 40? Really? That, see, that now to me, I know some people get mad at me, but when you people start saying the 19th year this came out, the 17th year, the 32nd, that's cool and all, but you can't do that. You have to celebrate the 30th, the 40th, and I will allow 35th. Okay. 45th. You'll do five, five years. Five. But yeah. if you do the 22nd, the, the third, the 17th, <laughs> all these things, you're going to celebrate every movie, every single year. You're going to, what, every day there'll be like 800 movies that came out? No. You have to just celebrate the major milestone. Unless you're in oh, the Neil Jones. That is my rules. I have lots of rules that, that I like to stand by. That is one of them. <laughs> I have a very, very, uh, I have a very specific rules on time as well. When, when the new day starts. What? If you're up. Yes. It's and still the, night. And it's still right. It's, it's to me the time's at 4 a.m. So before 4 a.m., it's still the, the day before if you've been up. I think that's very sound. I can totally roll with that. Yeah. After after five, then then I think it you can't just keep saying yeah. that it's when the sun is actually rising in the sky is usually what I go with. Like if we were to part, if we were to go hang out. Right, which and we used to do parted all the time. ways, yeah. and the sun wasn't up. Chances are high, I'd still say good night. Right, right, exactly, exactly. The sun is up, and clearly it is the dawn. Right, right. Have, have Otherwise, you get into madness, and you'd be like, "I've been up three days; it's still Tuesday." But you know, then you're just you're then you're just foolish. So you're between four high. and five, that's the kind of a nebulous time. Uh, you could go, you could say whatever you want between that time, but up till 4 a.m. If you've still been up and it's night, it's still the, it's still the night. It's still the previous day. That was my rules. I'm there for that. All right. Very good. Yes. There's so probably other, food, on this one uh, but that's, uh, those are, those are the more important ones in my mind. Have you heard of a film called There's Something in the Barn? No, but it sounds cool. Barn Elf Horror? What? Is this All a right, whole new so genre? Sourcing from Fangoria. Because this is my thing now. So hopefully Fangoria approves. If not, we'll find someone else. So the title of this is, I'll send you the picture so you can share it. Because it's pretty sweet. And you're going to dig it. Perhaps the most. Uh, it is a Barn Elf. He's pretty sweet, and I will I will show it to you on the Facebook, and you can share it with the crowd. Is this is this considered elf elf playstation? I think so. It's no elves though. I was gonna well, mention that during the um us talking about favorite holiday horror, and elves is one of my top for sure. Okay, so this little guy. Magnus Martin's There's Something in the Barn made quite the impression when it screened at Fantastic Fest this year. 
And now we've learned, thanks to a new trailer and report at Bloody Bis Disgusting, Bloody Disgusting, oh my God, Bloody Disgusting, when everyone else will get to see this rollicking barn elf horror jam, December 5th, cool, why, that's my own cool, inserted, why, that's just in time for Christmas, here's an official plot synopsis for anyone just joining the party. An American family fulfills their dream of returning to their roots after inheriting a remote cabin in the mountains of Norway. However, they are in for a big surprise. An elf with a nasty temper lives in the house's barn. When the family starts to infuriate the creature, a raw and bloody struggle for survival ensues. Hell yeah! So there is a trailer for those seeking... Um, and as Pandoria reports, this is a strong trailer. So it is it says it's fun seeing this oblivious American family bumble their way into an ass kicking by a number of barn elves. So not even just one barn Damn, elf. I, I am all about this. This yes. is like a musty film. Yes. And the tone here calls to mind other darkly comedic holiday themed horror films like Rare Exports. Which was great. I finally saw. I don't know why it took so long. And Krampus. Kudos Krampus. to. Um, yeah, I have to give credit to my fine friend Pumpkin Rot for the Krampus decor. Some wonderful things. The elves themselves look good too. A bit goofy, but also. I want them to be a bit goofy. That's what their point is, though. Is they look good. A bit goofy, but also just the right amount of menacing. They like yeah. it. Not like a oh. bit goofy, right, and, right. but like they're a bit goofy and menacing. Yeah, they look kind of, they look perfect to me. I'm all about this. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. Uh, I am all, I'm going to be what? really disappointed if this is not fantastic. Oh. So speaking of... Know the genital productions. He's very <laughs> Very happy. I know, right? That's pretty, pretty happening yeah. stuff over there. General productions. <laughs> My goodness. So quotes, uh, BD quotes, Martin's is saying the following. Blade Disgusting quotes him as saying the following. Barn elves are deeply rooted in Norwegian folklore and tradition. They are in our souls and part of our culture. Making a movie about a foreign family who do not understand them then annoys the hell out of them, and then must fight them makes perfect sense. The only weird thing about it is that it hasn't been done before. He goes on to say, I love Christmas movies as much as anyone else, and having two kids, I have watched them all over the years around the holidays. But what all of us really seem to miss is a movie that has a fresh, new, original approach without losing the classic Christmas spirit. I truly believe there's something in the barn is what people are looking for. Hell yeah. Something in the barn. There's something in the barn. I want to see this. So uh, they finish off the article. Sounds good to us. Martins, who previously directed episodes of Fear the Walking Dead, Good Behavior, and Banshee, oversees a cast led by Martin Starr. I'm Rita Akaria. Excuse me if I'm saying that wrong. And Hepe Beck Larson all of whom are working from a script by Alexander Kirkwood Brown. We recommend pouring yourself a big ass mug of eggnog. They put two, you don't put a gap in eggnog. It is one word. Thank you. Big ass mug of eggnog and giving this one a whirl when it hits digital on December 5th. That sounds like it needs to be in the damn theater. Yeah. Sorry, that freaking super. I, that sounds awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. So, yeah, folks, check it out. There's something in the barn. Very I love cool. this. Title. This just sounds great all over. I'm excited. Our friend, uh, <clears throat> Emily Black. Yes. Um, they, uh, you can go and pre order the uh, You Got Red on You 2024, her annual calendar. Oh. Last year I was in there, which was very exciting. This year, another I without know. your head uh, member is in there, and that is Todd, Todd Yeager. Baker. That's and the worth pictures are that I saw. Todd, did you see them? No. <gasps> I'll get it, and then you can share it, and it's so great. And I don't think the ones that he shared, I'm sure 
he's not sharing ones that she sh wouldn't want shared. I almost said Sean. I did. Yeah, I've got to get to work too. I I I need to do the. Uh, oh my God, Todd only master photos so many times. I don't even know which one the original is. Okay, I think I found it. Okay. Yes. Oh my God. It's so great. Click on image for full view. It is full. Oh, okay. I got it. Make sure. I, I do not it. normally pick on the images Todd has. No, I was just going to say, you got to be careful. View. We don't want to get any, you get no, any naughty bits Todd on here. very proud of himself, which is a beautiful thing. People should feel good about themselves. And Todd does. <laughs> Oh, I have seen this photo. I didn't realize that's, that's what it's so from. Oh, good. Hopefully, people can. This is much easier for me um, if we do it this way. But um, look, that's wild. What is different from? Uh, are you doing something different to share it? Because it is. I'm, just, I'm sharing the screen as opposed to downloading and then uploading it to. Uh, uh, it's um, it's uh, much quicker for me. Yes. It's smaller. And you can see us still over in the corner here. We're not pretty compared sweet compared to the picture. But yeah, it's amazing. So this, I, I love the idea for this calendar um, that every month you've got some some person in the horror world. And they have red, and this is just amazing of Todd. He looks. Thanks, Neil. I see how it is. No, I was trying oh. to hear you. Now I see. I already knew, but oh, that's that's so great. Yeah, so check that out, Emily. Emily, where can you get that fine calendar? Um, wait, wait one second. Uh, Indiegogo.com slash project slash you got red on it. There's, there's no way people remember that. So look up, um, you got red on you 2024 and Indiegogo. I'll try it. If uh, I'll try to put a, I'll, I'll try to link this right on, on our main website too. Yeah. It's tough to, to do. You on got red on head you. There's like a book that just came out about Shaun of the dead that comes up. Um, let's see. You see, the, this is the very long thing, but uh, if you put you got red on you, and I'll link it right on our main website. Uh, for people out there, if you'd like us to uh, put up uh, um, trailers and stuff, email me at withoutyourhead at gmail.com. And as long as it's not too spammy and we know you, uh, you know, I'll put up a lot of stuff. What else we got going on here? The People Under the Stairs being remade by Jordan Peele's Monkey. Really? Hmm. I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a fan of the movie. Hmm. Scott Rompler wrote this today. Just a quarter of two in the evening, in the afternoon. Hey, John, what's up? John. <laughs> hey, John. Uh, People oh. Under the Stairs being remade by Jordan Peele's Monkey Paw, the remake of Wes Craven's Bizarro Night appropriate 1991 horror film will be written by Ezra Clayton Daniels. Here's an interesting bit of news. According to a new report over a deadline, Jordan Peele's monkey paw productions is mounting a remake of Wes Craven's intensely weird. I feel like I should go to deadline for this. That seems right. Doesn't I, it? I literally, I have, uh, I just start, sorry to interrupt you, but like I put this thing up and there's must be like 30 replies. So I'll never get, to all this stuff tonight but i'm gonna go through this and i'll keep track of it and uh, i'll add some stuff next week to what find folks uh really? when i asked i asked for uh trailers or just stuff that people wanted us would like us to talk about and there's a bazillion things here so uh, i'm gonna have to go through it all and not necessarily talk about them tonight but i'll go through them and we'll have some highlights next week okay um, bum, 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 bum. all right, Monkey Prob Productions will produce, this is now Deadline article, since that's the original source, will produce the film with Jordan Peele and Wynn Rosenfeld serving as producers. That's a lot of producer. Bless you. Project is still in early development. The original Universal Studios movie, 
which Craven wrote and directed and produced with Shep Gordon, follows young fool Brandon Adams who breaks into the home of his family's greedy and uncaring landlords. There he discovers a disturbing scenario where incestuous adult siblings have mutilated a number of boys and kept them imprisoned under the stairs in their large creepy house. I don't know why my brain never put it in that light quite like that. It's an interesting summary. As Fool attempts to flee before the psychopath can catch him, he meets their daughter Alice, who has been spared any extreme discipline by her deranged parents. Fool and Alice attempt to escape. Uh, Daniels most recently contributed to Jordan Peele's New York Times bestselling short anthology. This is, I can see why, um, all right. Angoria did a better article. <laughs> All right. So for so I'll go back to theirs. Um, for those who've never seen Wes Craven's filmography overflows with iconic horror titles, and it's honestly a little bit surprising that the people under the stairs isn't name checked more frequently amongst horror nerds. It is a genuinely unsettling film, one that feels very of the moment for the time in which it was made. Given what Monkey Paw did with their Candyman remake, it feels safe to assume the new people under the stairs will also feel very much of its time, and that whatever Monkey Paw and Daniels have planned for it will twist the formula a, a bit. This one's just been announced, and there's not much to report at this time. Rest assured, however, that we're going to be all over this one, and we'll keep you informed as further updates rolled in. Stay tuned for those folks. I loved New Candyman. I did too. I know many people do not. <laughs> and I, it's not, not really a remake. It, it, that was, I think that's a proper use of the term reboot because it's like, it is a sequel and it's re trying to restart the franchise. Reboot I think the that franchise. all these like words, it's just such like a. Yeah. It, no, I it's, just think it's ultimately. because remake has a bad, has. I think remake automatically people think is bad. So they try to make all these different terms, remake, rebrand, re reboot. Re I just feel like at the end of the day, does it re is the movie good? Do you enjoy ah, exactly, it? Exactly. Does it, does it matter if it's That's the same, in what line? What people argue over in each other. That's the thing is like, do you enjoy it? If you don't enjoy it, it doesn't matter what re this, re that. It doesn't matter. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you like it, you like it. It doesn't matter. So I, whatever the fuck the new Candyman is, I just call new Candyman and say I like mm -hmm. it. I don't care. Yeah. How I really to the other ones? It's a good movie. So I'm really curious about people under the stairs and what they're gonna do with that. I haven't seen that movie in. Years. I watched it. Uh, well, my mom watched it for the first time a couple weeks ago, and I didn't watch oh, the whole right. thing. Oh, she it. loved it, didn't it. she? Yeah, I know she, she loved it. Yeah. yeah, I know her kind of creepy film. Yeah. Oh, that, by the way, I, got, I know we got a lot of people lined up, but I got to look in about Sean Whalen and his Crest movie. Oh, yes. Sean Whalen. Definitely. Uh, Craig, so we got, uh, where, where we got for the, where's the list at? My new list. Yeah. Now well, we're not organized. Next week is, <laughs> uh, is Thanksgiving, so I don't know if we uh, will have to figure out what we're going to do. I know we won't be doing a live show. Maybe we'll re-record stuff, like you said, but I don't know when we'll have time to do that. But we'll figure something Never. out. It's not happening. Yeah. No, if okay. not, I, I will uh, throw together yeah. something to, to put up on, the, right. up on the website. Sean Whalen is now entered the WYH Future Guests spreadsheet. I like it. I didn't put in any details. So we plug in those details. Cross. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I will. <clears throat> it, it'll probably you... be him and um and Rebecca Kennedy. Okay. Uh, so uh, just a real for you people don't know. I don't think you maybe you don't know. So Sean was making. He's been wanting to make crust for a while. He finally got it made. He uh he got uh, Rebecca Kennedy on as the female lead in the movie. I'm, I'm she's really cool. Had her on after her first movie um, and thought she was really talented. And it's very cool to see her do very well since then. And um, they got along so well, they actually started their own production company. And they're they're producing independent movies together, Sean Whale and Rebecca Kennedy. That's great. It's 
fantastic. It looks awesome from what I saw. Yeah. And uh, she was really excited. She, she was at her first convention as a guest uh, last oh, month. Oh, that's fantastic. Where was she at? Uh, it was somewhere in Texas. It wasn't Texas Frightmare, but it was, it was a convention in Texas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know that there is an Omen prequel coming out? No, Omen prequel. Interesting. News. This These guys are pumping it out November 16th at 2.30. A mere half hour, an hour later. Look at 20th Centuries, the Omen prequel. Let me share with you. I this Now, this is not Omen related, but I pitched an idea to someone uh, a couple weeks ago to make a prequel to like a, a renowned horror movie. But the prequel is before anything happens. There's no killer. So it's just like a, it's just like a comedy. What? <laughs> so it'd be like a prequel to some horror movie, but it's before the killer's even around. So it's just like this fun, loving comedy that would entertain me. It'd be like trolling the audience. It's not really anything someone would make, but actually, uh, it could this... be, I think it would be kind of cool. Because I'm, then I'm maybe you would trick people. You don't even play it. Oh man, that would be really interesting. If you maybe you just make with your long term grand scheme plan, you put out a movie that is like a, like a hallmark movie, right? And then the next movie that you have total control. Oh, so you can do in reverse <laughs> instead of a prequel to a horror movie. The the sequel is a horror film. I think the sequel being a horror movie would be like cruel and great and horror people would really like it if it's good I, because, it, you, because they'd be in with you. They'd be like, yes, stupid family died. <laughs> That's cool, right? I can barely and see it. It actually works because uh, just zoom it in. I can't. Because I can't even see it on my computer. I can't see it. I can't. It's teeny. Shrinky dink tea. It's unfortunate. Well, you can get it like when you do look at it, if you would throw it up again. Uh, I'm going to try to save it and put it. Oh, in. cool. Okay. Nice. So well, as you save it, I will, uh, I'll t tell, share the tale. The first omen. Here's our first look at 20th century's The Omen Prequel. Arkasha Stevenson's film arrives this April by Fangoria staff. Hey, did you know 20th Century has a brand new Omen movie headed our way? A prequel by the name of The First Omen? It's kind of a dumb name. Honestly. It is. The First Omen. Okay. Well, now you know. And what's more, they've released our very first look at the film, which comes to us from director Our cut. Look at that. That's It is cool. Yeah, it looks I like a painting. That. I want to don't don't make it go away because I want to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wait, is that fourteen? That can't 14, be. It's got to be thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it's fourteen. Twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Huh. I find it very interesting. That there are, is no 13 in these candles. Yeah, no 13. I can, I could see not doing 666 candles. Yeah, that's fair. But what, yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I think that's a missed opportunity, but maybe there's some kind of relevance. So there's two, 12, 14. Maybe that's something I don't understand. There's double 13? If you have them together, it's 26. Two, 12, and 14? You said 12 and 14, so that's two 13s is what I'm saying. Because that would be 26. Yeah, but then there's two lights above it, too, which looks mm. like they're all part of the same. Oh, no, it looks like a face. It looks a like face. eyes yeah. and, then, and then the, the Exactly. Nah. So then I'm wondering, are those, well, it could, maybe it is. Okay. Two 13s. We'll go with it. Uh, first Omen comes from director. Can I take this down now? Gosh, uh, if you want to, Stevenson, and will exclusively hit theaters this coming April. Let's take a peek, and there's your peek. 
Well, that certainly looks the right amount of spooky and gothic. Let's see what their press release has yeah. to say for itself. I know, right, John? <laughs> I'm, I like to see you, John. It's nice to have Review you. Review that Pilgrim's movie. We haven't seen it yet, but we would um, like to. When a young American woman is sent to Rome to begin a life of service to the church, she encounters a darkness that causes her to question her own faith and uncovers a terrifying conspiracy that hopes to bring about the birth of evil incarnate. The First Omen stars Nell Tiger Free from Servant, Tafik Barnum, Mary Magdalene. Oh, I guess these are their, their are titles, not the things they were in. Mary Magdalene, Sonia Braga, Kiss of the Spider Woman. No, these are titles, sorry. Ralph Innocent from The Northman, and Bill Nye. Uh, the film was directed by Araksha Stevenson based on characters created by David Seltzer from The Omen with a story by Ben Jacoby uh, and a screenplay by Tim Smith and Araksha Stevenson and Keith Thomas, who did Firestarter. The original Omen, you'll recall, arrived all the way back in 1976 via director Richard Donner. Here I was born. Oh, uh. In that film, a family adopts a young boy by the name of Damien who... It turns out after another people in and around the family wind up dead, might be the literal Antichrist. We all hate when that happens. The plot synopsis above is pretty light on details, but if this is a prequel to The Omen, and the story revolves around a young woman attempting to stop the birth of evil incarnate, we can probably extrapolate out some assumptions about how the first Omen plays out. Nothing further to report on The Omen at this time, but stay tuned between now and the film's arrival in theaters on April 5th for further updates. What do you think about this concept? <clears throat> hmm. I like the art. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I like the idea. I don't, I don't know. I think a prequel to Omen sounds strange because Omen's like he's a little baby. So. Yeah, but they talks very specifically about why it, it's relevant. Yeah. I mean, I'll go see it. It's there. There's people out there like trying to. They have to bring that baby into the womb, right? And how do they do it? It's kind of like sounds like they're putting Rosemary's baby, like they're making like a Rosemary's baby prequel. What do you think? That's what I'm yeah. getting. Right. Uh, like Cult, and they're gonna be like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I mean. I think a prequel to Rosemary Baby, but no, no, no. You know what I mean. I don't know. I don't know. I, I would. I'd be interested, but it, it doesn't. I don't know. Uh, I think yeah. a prequel to either one sounds odd to me. I feel like it could be a good story, but I'm afraid. I think. Yeah, it when could, you, I mean, I when don't you know do anything with these like, real classic movies, I don't think Omen yeah. gets a lot. I mean, people know Omen stuff, but I, it's not. As, I don't think it gets uh, as much recognition as a lot of movies from the era. It's fantastic. I know. I'm just saying. I, I think it. it should be talked about more. Is it not? I guess not. I think it's probably overshadowed by Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. I think those are when people think of. I don't know why the Omen doesn't get. Like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Triangle yeah. of demon cool. films, mm -hmm. Antichrist movies. Yeah, I'm all about it. We should do an Antichrist month. <laughs> Vic, what do you think about that? <laughs> there are some of those are very I good. I want to look into that. Uh, not Antichrist month, but uh. I'd like to get a guest from some Omen movies. That would be cool. Oh, that'd be awesome. This yeah, is a really good question by Craig Lindbergh, multiple time guest yeah. on the show. But uh, I I don't think it's one we can just like ask and answer here. I think it would be something we'd have to think about. But anyway, uh, compare how makeups have changed over the years, how it seems anything goes in the 60s, especially in exploitation cinema to now. I also think that's something he could talk about better as a professional makeup artist. Mm. Hmm. Well, I don't, I, I mean, it's like 
everything though it was like there was no science to it then either it's like people just did the best they could it's not like well at one point I people mentioned... didn't just didn't know how to do any of that stuff and i think there's a charm to that um when anything is overproduced it, it loses some of that spontaneity I, I could say same thing about professional wrestling i think um <clears throat> Um, like Monday Night Raw is very overproduced, everything scripted, and it doesn't have that same feel as wrestling when uh, used to not be scripted. They have bullet points. Um, but the, I think it goes for everything. But there's certain movies where that may actually be more beneficial. But I like, I, I definitely like the feel of, of a movie being more rough and mm. not like, uh, not perfect. Mm. But I, I know um, I've noticed used to be I used to just thought everything it was very universal that uh, practical effects people like better than than CG or something. But I've seen people um, from a certain generation. Then I just realized that that's the stuff they grew up with. And so they look at it the same way I look at stuff I grew up with where uh, there's a, it's uh, stuff that I grew like uh, even bad practical effects to me has a charm to it where bad CG just looks bad in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but I know when we you, had... um grew up with bad CG, love it, because they love how yeah, bad I think, it is? Yeah, I think there are, there are people who do. I think that's fair. fair. Yeah, I think because it's, you know, it's something that they grew up with, and that's what, and they dig that. But it doesn't, not to me, though. It's just, uh, honestly, even some CG that was considered good at the time, to me, does not age well. Does not mm. look good. Where um, a lot of the makeup, like even from like go but way back to Nosferatu, the the silent film, like I think that holds up and looks as, looks very scary now. Where there's stuff that I think it's not even that long ago and and it looks outdated. It's it's, it's uh, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, I think a lot of um, like Nosferatu, the acting gave so much to that. Um. And the lighting matters. Like, there's very dramatic lighting to set up that kind of makeup. It's, when we it's saw very, Dracula, like, yeah, the original Dracula, and it's never really been my favorite movie. Um, the, um, you know, the was it the '30s Dracula? Bella the um, yeah, yeah, Bela Lugosi Dracula has never been my favorite Universal monster movie. But watching it again, it's still not my favorite, but we saw it uh, during the Halloween marathon last year. But it's still an important movie because of what you're saying there, the shadows. Uh, great use of shadows in that movie. It looks amazing. The sets. Um, it's it's right at the turn from like uh, silent film, the talkie. So the the acting is a little strange, but uh, but just the vibe and the look of it is very is great. And it's a. Uh, very influential to movies after that. Mm. Excuse me. I have an itch. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like as far as what's different about effects then and now is, you know, we have the internet now too. We have the internet, we have school, we have those who came before us for everything to well, guide. I mentioned this a lot with Tom Savini on the show. He said the most fun he had was creating the effects back when there wasn't just a plan. Like now there's ways to do certain things. Those, now, obviously sometimes you'll have to make up, you know, expand on that. But when he was doing this stuff, like let's shoot this guy's head off in maniac. There was no real plan way to do that. They just went in the street and stuffed a bunch of things in a fake head and actually shot it with a shotgun. And, you know, just create, just coming up with these things and creating them on the spot. Like, uh, I just said there, that was much more fun than, you know, after there was mm -hmm. a set way, this is how you do these certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Because not like people aren't creative now, but there's a specific kind of, like genius to coming up with something that's never been done before. Yeah. You can take something that has been like become something 
that you can read about and learn about through past uh, creators. And you can make that your own and you can certainly continue to be creative and do amazing, mind boggling things. And at the same time, it's not the same as inventing something, you know? Yeah. yeah the problem solving, actually creating it. Yeah. Not to say that now it's worse or they're not as gifted or talented, but I think there's also now that things have been done, it's harder, just like with every movie story, all, all the, everything, it's like, it's hard to come up with new things now. Yeah. Yeah, As, of course. Yeah. But I mean, not, not even just the effects when I was talking about like overproduced to me, like a seven, a lot of seventies movies. Um, some of the scenes are a little longer than they would be today. There's things today for the most part, especially like the big blockbuster movies, very streamlined. And I, I like something that isn't. That's probably why I like those modern Scorsese movies because they have a feel of like an old movie where um, do, when we watch the new uh, Killers of, of the Flower Moon, there are scenes, do they need to, do they really progress the story necessarily? No, but um, I think in other movies they might be cut down, but I just kind of mm -hmm. like that they're there. Like just some interactions with De Niro and... Um, and uh, the, who's the other guy in the movie? Like, they're just sitting around talking, and does it necessarily add anything to the movie? Not really, but it's but it's entertaining. Mm -hmm. Do you remember yet? No, I can never think. I, that's actually, yet? for some reason, I always forget his name. It's like one of the biggest actors in the world. But... Yeah, I guess he is. Guy from Titanic. Titanic. <clears throat> yeah, he's a really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know that limb there. Uh, that's a good question, though. We've got a lot of stuff that's been going on in the chat that I haven't seen. So yeah, so Vic you. says that the first oh, yeah, omen should be based on the Garden of Eden. Hmm. That's interesting. If they're saying the first omen, not like the the omen before mm -hmm. if you're going back to the first omen you've got to go back like centuries i would think mm -hmm. i like that it's a good call not like there was never you know i wonder why there aren't like more that's films interesting that. yeah a but horror movie set oh in like DC. like having a horror movie set in the garden of eden like retelling the guard that that story yeah. I would think would be awesome. Mm -hmm. it, it's an awesome story. Like, it, like you do not have to be a Christian to appreciate that story has so much potential. I, I mean, it's, they're not horror movies, but when I was a kid, I loved like the the Cecil B. DeMille big blockbuster movies of the, their era. They were old when I was a kid still, but uh, the Ten Commandments and Ben Hur and th those kind. I love those kind of movies and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're all stories from the Bible. But if you took it and turned it into a horror movie, I think that would be incredible. I don't know. There's so much like, oh, like battle about everything that it's like, oh, you can't do that because then yeah, like people get crazy. bad. Like the Winnie the Pooh is not particularly that. good. I have no problem that they make a horror movie off Winnie the Pooh. Totally fine by yeah. me. And I have one of this is something that does bother me sometimes because people say, oh, they're ruining all these Disney movies. Disney didn't create our, like any <laughs> of the stories. They they stole them. If you want to say these other movies stole them, then Disney stole them, too. That's a very good point. It's true. And the version you know from Disney are not the original versions. They're much different. They used they, to be horror stories. Yes. They're much great. And Disney right? took horror stories, turned them into. Right. And right. now we're just going through that process of time, the, the yeah. cycle. Exactly. Pinocchio is much darker. Little Mermaid's much darker. All this stuff's much darker. Mm -hmm. 
Jonathan Jackson showed up as well. I don't know if you even saw that. Jonathan Jackson! <laughs> uh, what got erected? Whoa! Hey, now! Ha, ha, ha. His interest, apparently, to come in and throw some chat out there. Very out of context. Very out of context. I don't even know what that was about anymore. <laughs> uh, He's a good dude to let Jonathan Jackson. I like yeah, that guy. Jonathan seems like a nice guy. He, yeah, he is a good dude. No uh, matter uh, what uh, Nick Schiavone uh, says about him. I, I have to go, sir. It's after 11. I All have right. had a headache most of this evening. And I stayed. Because well, I, I appreciate him. that. I had a good time. Yes. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see the movie this weekend. I guess it all depends on how you're feeling and everything. I'm probably going to go see it. I'm on the mend. Huh? I'm on the mend. Yeah. I'm on, on my way. I'm trying to find. See. Hopefully, hopefully tomorrow I'll be okay. Yeah. I Before you go, I'm going to show you this one thing of uh, of Mr. Jackson here. Look at this guy. Boom. Look at that. I don't know what he's reading, but I like that shirt he's wearing. Oh, my God. And the hat. <laughs> Me and Jackson have a tag team name. We can start, you know, grappling. White yeah. chocolate and black vanilla. It's white chocolate, Jackie Jones, and black vanilla, Jonathan Jackson. You know, this is not in your head, Mr. Jones. Uh, no, he's a good guy. He obviously look, he 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 also has uh he has a bunch of horror stuff. He, he's not just mm -hmm. he's uh he's going back and forth. So. Mm -hmm. He's a good dude. You'd like him. He's very funny. Maybe I he will get him to have anyway. any indication of disliking him. <laughs> You like to convince me. I'm like, he seems fine. He seems like a cool guy. You're like, you'd like him. No, he's okay. He's actually all right. No, he's he's fine. Um, I don't need he seems like all right. Guy. So we'll be back next. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. But what you yeah. do is you go over to facebook.com slash group slash without your head horror. Uh you'll find out. Subscribe on YouTube. Hit the hit the like button. I don't really even know why, but do it. It makes us feel good. Hit that icon, uh, not the internet icon from here, but hit that icon and you'll get you'll get a notification supposedly every time we go live. I got noticed earlier today we're granted permission to go live on Instagram. I tried it out, did not work, but maybe we'll get uh, that figured out. That's next very week. cool. Nice. Yes, yes. Wow. Uh, I'm sure there's a way, but I was very limited time because it was last week. Fine. Month. Fine. Yeah. I, 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 I've. I, I'm getting all. Ca I drank all this in this. I, you I are way, yeah. <laughs> but we'll be back at uh, at some point. Check out dinner and a movie. We just did one on some crap movie. Although I will say Todd <laughs> like Todd dug it. So hey, maybe you guys he did. Like yeah, Todd told me he really liked it. So check wow. that out. So and. No but as we always say, everybody should watch the stuff that we hate. Not everybody should watch it, but if you feel like you wanted to try it, you should yeah, still yeah, try it. Because yeah, right. maybe you'll be like Todd and completely disagree with us. We disagree with Joe a lot, too. So. Right. Yeah, maybe more so with him. I don't know about that dude. That could be. Yeah, some of his reviews, I'm not a question, but, but yeah. That's and we're true. all friends. So Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's good. Hey, he loves skin and rink. We like Jamie Hill. So what, I love heck? Jamie Hill. I have still have to watch Skin and Rink again, to be fair, to be fair. All right. So this is Nasty Neil. Annabelle Lecter. And this was without your head. I won't laugh too loud since you have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Walking up the mother, jumping for those who lose it, hop the plan of all, so
my throat And then you will be there You're a little for now I love you, little Ophelia <laughs> And what you will be there I know you want to I love you, little Ophelia I want to make you I love you, little Ophelia I want to make you I love you, little Ophelia I want to make you